Packers football from Folsom Field in Boulder. It's the Kansas State University Wildcats versus the University of Colorado Buffaloes. Today's game is being brought to you by Samsonite and by Grease Monkey, both proud companies for Colorado. And also by Miller Genuine Draft Light, by U.S. West, and by Taco Bell. Now, here are Les Shapiro and Dave Logan. Hi, everybody. Les Shapiro along with Dave Logan at Folsom Field. It's CU against Kansas State. And, Dave, it's the last home game for 24 CU seniors. Yeah, it really has been an outstanding class. Uh, a lot of great memories the last four or five years with these kids. Names like Canavis McGee, Alfred Williams, Eric Bieniemy, Joe Garten, just to name a few. And I know Bill McCartney and his staff have been extremely proud of their accomplishments. It's the last chance for the home crowd to see that guy you just mentioned, Eric Bieniemy, the nation's leading rusher. Well, Eric's had a terrific career. He leads the nation in rushing, averaging close to 152 yards per game. He's the all-time leading rusher here in Colorado football history. And that, that's really going back a long, long ways. Names like Charles Davis, Bobby Anderson, some great running backs and the at the top of the class. This could very well be the best offensive line in the nation. And another senior anchors that line, Joe Garten. Yeah, Joe Garten's an excellent football player, maybe an overachiever in terms of his athletic ability. 43 career starts. Every game that he's played here as a Buffalo, he's been in the starting lineup. Let's talk about Kansas State here for a second. They have a pretty good quarterback in Carl Strub but we might not see a lot of him today. Well, Carl, Carl Straw in his career has thrown for over 5,000 yards. He's got a bum right shoulder, so we don't know how long he expects to play. He's got two excellent wide receivers, and if Kansas State is to be successful here this afternoon, they need Carl Straw in the lineup. All right, we'll be back very soon for the kickoff, but first, before we go to a commercial, let us indulge here just for one second. Channel 4 and the entire Colorado television community lost a friend this past week. Tom Piper, our former chief engineer, passed away at the age of 34. Tom had left the station nearly a year ago to return to his family's farm in southeastern Colorado. If he were still with us, he would have been responsible for the technical aspects of the picture and sound you are hearing and seeing today. Tom was recognized across the country as one of the brightest young minds in television engineering, and he was nominated for a regional Emmy for his work on our Boulder Boulder telecasts. Before coming to KCNC, Tom worked at television stations in Pueblo and Colorado Springs. He is survived by his wife, Sharon, and three children, Tom, Katie, and Abby. All of us at Channel 4 will miss not only Tom's technical expertise, but his friendship as well. We dedicate this telecast to Tom Piper's memory. So, how many do we need? Fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred. When you need copies fast, count on Kinko's, the copy center. We take care of the copies so you can take care of business. When it's after five and you need copies, depend on Kinko's, the copy center. We're open early, open late, and open weekends for your convenience. Get your copies before work, after work, almost any time. Kinko's, open early, open late, open weekends. At Midas, we do break work, not guesswork. That's why we give you a good price after we pull all four wheels and give you a free inspection. Then we spell out exactly what you're going to need, exactly what we're going to do, and exactly what it's going to cost. No surprises. We road test the job and guarantee every brake shoe and pad for as long as you own your car. Sure, we want your business, but not the expense of your safety. Nobody beats Midas. Nobody. <laughs> Winter upon us, Nissan would like to remind you that the Pathfinder SEV6 four-door was judged 4x4 four four of the year by four-wheel and off-road magazine. Don't get stuck with anything else. One, two, three! times and great oldies you gotta listen to cool 105 
Another gorgeous day at Folsom Field in Boulder, Colorado. And on the field right now, the public address announcer introducing each of the 24 CU seniors individually to a nice round of applause. Well, as we said, these guys really the last four and, and some of these guys five years have put a lot of hard work in. It's an emotional game. It's, it's the game that you finally realize this will be the last time you run out here behind that big buffalo wearing the black and gold. And it's, it's a game you always will remember. Nice to see these guys really get recognized in this fashion. And these CU seniors have seen success like no other class of CU seniors in the past. Well, no question about it. They, uh, the first time last year they were ever ranked number one. This year they'll play for the national championship again, consecutive years. That's almost unheard of. O.C. Oliver now being introduced. Had a tough career injury-wise. Was a great player his freshman year. Well, the Orange Bullbound CU Buffs are going for their ninth straight win, their 14th straight at home. If you're wondering, the record is 15. There's one heck of a senior, Mike Pritchard, one of the top all-purpose yardage men in the nation this year. Plus, the Buffs are going for their first ever back-to-back -back seasons of 10 wins or more. The series record between these two teams, well, CU leads it, 33 wins to 12 losses. The Buffs have won the last five games. The last time Kansas State won here, Dave, was 1973, and you remember it well because you played in that game. Yeah, unfortunately, I do remember. That was uh, Eddie Crowder's last game as the head coach of the CU Buffaloes. Bill Mallory took over in the following year. You see Alfred Williams being introduced, blowing a few kisses. It's kind of like a parade. What a great, great group. Well, as we mentioned, a gorgeous day here in Boulder. The temperature, a very nice 63 degrees, virtually no wind whatsoever. Unusual for Boulder. And the forecast, well, it's going to stay sunny all day. I mentioned the last time the guys get a run behind that buffalo, and uh, I'll tell you, when she takes off, it, uh, it hits the gas pedal a bit. I was always glad I could run behind her and not be one of those guys that had to hang on to her. Almost like the running of the bulls, <laughs> isn't it? Oh, man. <laughs> all right, let's go down to the field. Mark McIntosh is down there to give us reports all during the game, and Mark has one for us right now. Mac? Thank you very much, Les. You guys have been talking about Eric Bieniemy. He's leading the nation in rushing. Well, this is the first time in three seasons he's played against Kansas State. His sophomore year, he pulled a hamstring the week before against Nebraska. Didn't play against the Wildcats. Last year, as you might remember, he had that broken leg when the Buffs finished up the season against Kansas State and didn't play. And he told me this week he's really looking forward to playing not only because it's his last game here in Folsom Field, but also he hadn't been able to rack up many yards against the Wildcats lately. So he's really looking forward to today's ball game. Back upstairs. Thanks, Mark. Dave, I think it'll be interesting to see what happens near the end of the game if CU is well ahead. Will Bill McCartney keep Eric Bieniemy in the game knowing that the nation's rushing lead is at stake? Well, I suspect he'll keep him in the game long enough to uh, secure the victory. And you also have to give Bieniemy a chance to, to add a few yards. Uh, he missed the first game because of, because of the suspension. And although I don't, I don't think Bill will take a chance of, of keeping him in too long and, and and having some sort of injury take place, I think you owe it to your seniors in this their last game to play as many of them as you can as long as they possibly can go. While keeping in mind you don't want to go into the Orange Bowl fighting for the national championship with any injuries to keep players. Dave, is there any chance that the Buffs might be looking past Kansas State knowing what is ahead of them on New Year's Day? Oh, sure. I mean, absolutely they are. They're, they're, they know that Notre Dame is down the road and uh, what you have to think is much the same as last week. Emotionally, this will be a team that will play just about as well as uh, Kansas State will allow and, and hopefully play as well as they need to to win. But this will not be uh, an overly emotional group, uh, with the exception, of course, of those seniors being their last game. And they must keep in mind that this Kansas State team is no pushover. They're nicknamed the Wildcats. They used to be called the Mildcats. KSU was labeled one of the worst programs, if not the worst, Division I program in the country, not just in recent years, but all time. From 1984 to 1989, KSU averaged one win per season. Averaged one win. So you see it right there from 1985 up through this year. There were a couple years in there where they didn't win at all. But Bill Snyder has done a wonderful job turning this program around. This year, so far, they are 5-5, five and five, going for only their second winning season 
in the last 20 years. The last time they were over 500 was in 1982. They went 7-4, and four, and that is the only year that this program has gone to a bowl game. They played in the Independence Bowl. Now, Dave, there's a chance we might see an all-senior starting lineup for CU, isn't there? Well, Bill McCartney in the past and other coaches have done the same thing. They get their seniors in at least for the first couple of plays. I don't know that Bill will do that, but uh, if he does, it's a nice way to, to say for some of the guys that will not continue to play, hey, at least I started my last game in college. All right, set to kick off for Kansas State is number 39, Warren Clausen, a freshman. And back to receive for the Buffs, Mike Pritchard. Pritchard will take it about four yards deep. Makes the prudent move, decides not to run that ball out. So CU will start with the ball at their own 20-yard line in the regular season finale. Here's the offense for CU at quarterback Darian Hagan. The running backs are Biennemi, George Hemingway, a senior, and Michael Simmons. At receiver, Pritchard, and the tight end is Sean Brown. On the offensive line, we told you how good they are, possibly the best in the nation. Solomon Garten and Lewinberg, and on the right side, it's Campbell and Vanderbilt. First and 10 for the Buffs from their own 20. Hagan going deep right off the bat to Rico Smith. Knocked out of his hands by number eight, C.J. Masters. So the Buffs right off the bat go for the big hit. The defense for Kansas State. They play an unconventional defense. Five defensive linemen and two linebackers. It goes like this. Killian, Williams, Simpson, Moten, and Alexander on the line. Two linebackers are Chris Patterson and James Inanaku. The defensive backs are Price, Green, Needham, and C.J. Masters. Second and ten for the Buffs. Two running backs behind Hagen. The enemy gets the call and gets a couple of yards. Kansas State defensively has been a much better team this year, and primarily because they've added some size. They are big across the front, 295 pounds. They've got a couple of guys over 270, and unlike previous years in which you could pretty much manhandle their front people, they've been able to stand up and play the run reasonably well. We should mention Kansas State came to Boulder without its leading tackler. Brooks Barta, a sophomore linebacker, he hurt a knee last week against Oklahoma. Third and nine for the Buffs. Hagan going deep once again, looking for Rico Smith, and he's got him this time in Kansas State territory, down to the 39-yard line before Roger Green brings Smith down. Well, the offensive line doing a pretty good job of pass protection. Hagan had all day, and Rico Smith going to the post, well covered initially by Green, and then the ball underthrown. Green doesn't do a good job of adjusting to the fly to the football. And Rico Smith does. 39 yards later, Buffs have their first first down. Darian Hagan very close to breaking the record for passing yards in one season. He came into the game needing just 95 yards to pass Steve Vogel on the all-time list. First and 10 for the Buffs at the Kansas State 40. The pitch to the enemy. Eric is able to turn the corner and gets down to the 22-yard line. Masters there to finally stop him. Well, this is just a good move by Eric Bieniemy as he ducks inside. He forces the Kansas State defense to really play that angle. Watch the move to the outside. And the stiff arm here, a good job as he prevents Green again from coming up and making the tackle. Bieniemy has much better speed than you would think judging from his build. Looks more or less like a small guy, but he has got exceptionally quick feet and the ability to make people miss as well. And as you saw, he read the blocking very, very well. Call it a gain of 17 yards. The Buffs down to the Kansas State 23-yard line. First down. Hagan wanted to run the option there, but tripped over his own feet. It'll be a loss of maybe one yard. Well, Darian Hagan really has been banged up much of this year. It has not been a vintage Hagan year, although he certainly has turned into a pretty good pass, but unlike last year, he has not been the explosive runner from the quarterback position. And I think mainly due to all the injuries he's had, he's never been 100% healthy since the season over. It's just the last couple games, Hagen has looked like the Darian Hagen of old. It'll be second and ten. Kansas State bringing the blitz. 
The enemy tries to turn it outside that time again, but no, sir. William Price makes the tackle. Gain of one yard. You can see Hagen and Bienemy talking. That time Kansas State brought the blitz. And sometimes if you can see that coming quick enough, you can audible out of the play and get into something better. But that time Kansas State doing a good job of disguising the blitz. Number 76 on your screen, Evan Simpson. 315 pounds at the nose. Third and ten. Blitz. Hagen read it. Saw an opening. He's got an open highway to the end zone. Touchdown, Darius. But one of the things that makes Hagen so, such a dangerous quarterback, he's got the ability to throw, but he also has innate ability to scramble. You can see the thing open up, and once Hagen breaks that line of scrimmage, nobody's going to catch him. He's only had one 100-yard rushing game this year, but certainly excellent in that first drive, throwing and running. Darian Hagen's fourth rushing touchdown of the year. And Jim Harper is in for the extra point attempt. He's got it, and the Buffs have a 7-0 lead with 12.02 to go in the first quarter. Yeah, the meeting with Nakamura went great. The way he was talking, it sounds like a done deal if we can deliver the plans by the 30th. Oh, we've got to give him a yes or no answer before he leaves town. Look, I gotta go. He said he called from the airport. It's in the bag. Don't miss those important calls. Call U.S. West for an extra line just for your special customers. U.S. West, making the most of your time. Yeah, yeah, I'll get the scoop. Here they come now. Hold on to your hands, boys, and I'll tell you all about it. Your Colorado GMC truck dealers are having the biggest, easiest truck sale ever. Cool your heels, boys, and take a look. Roll it, Billy. As you can see, the all-wheel drive safari is no ordinary minivan. Any discounts from the dealers? You kidding? Dealer discounts and cash back. Sounds too good to last. Where's the gig up? Soon, yeah. real soon, so you better step on it. Get discounts, cash back, low interest rates. It's the big, easy sale at your local Colorado GMC truck dealer. It is a beautiful time of the year, heavy with excited anticipation of a joyous season where family and friends gather. It is the ritual of winter season when all gather for Thanksgiving and joy. This holiday, make sure you are ready with beautiful new dining room furniture from Howard Lorton. For a limited time, enjoy extraordinary savings on any dining room in stock, ready for holiday delivery. It's available now and only at Howard Lorton, Colorado's leader in quality home furnishings and interior design. Well, Darian Hagan threw for 237 yards last week as the Buffaloes beat the Oklahoma State Cowboys. The play action fake, and he stands in there long enough to let things develop, but when nothing opens, Hagen is off to the races. He still has exceptional speed, and everybody in a man-to-man -man cover situation with their backs turned to the quarterback. By the time they knew Hagen was running, it was way too late. Seven plays, 80 yards, and less than three minutes to open the game with a touchdown scoring drive. And let's give some credit to that offensive line. Gave Hagen all day to eye the field and finally see that opening on the left side. Harper kicking off. And that's number 28, Andre Coleman, returning for Kansas State. He's got room on the sideline, finally knocked out of bounds. The officials spotting it at the 33 and a half yard line. Greg Lindsay knocked him out. Here's the Kansas State offense. Number 10, Carl Straw with a tender right shoulder starting at quarterback. The running backs are Boyd and Pat Jackson. And your receivers are Russ Campbell, Frank Hernandez, and Michael Smith. A very good pair in Hernandez and Smith. On the line, it's Orr, Grush, New Year, Wolford, and Gouloy. Kansas State, first and ten from its own 34. Keep your eye on these wide receivers. If Carl Straw's shoulder is okay, he'll be able to get it to those two. They are dangerous. K-State comes out throwing. That's Hernandez making the reception. Well, the officials call it no. Dave McLuhan knocked it out of his hand. Yeah, McLuhan got his left hand on the ball just as Hernandez was going to pull it in. This was an audible by Straw. McLuhan breaks on the football. He's got very good speed. 
saw an interesting article this week that said one of the reasons McLuhan cannot play corner in the National Football League is because his lack of blazing speed. The guy runs 4-3-5. I saw that, too. I couldn't believe it. He's got to be, if not the fastest person on this team, the second fastest yeah, behind Rico Smith. Absolutely. He's got excellent speed. Second and ten for Kansas State. They are coming out throwing. A little dump off pass to Michael Smith. He gets the first down out at the 47. Greg Beaker knocked him for a loop. We've talked about uh, Kansas State being an improved football team as you take a look at the defense. On the line for the Buffs, Marcellus Elder, Joel Steed, Gary Howe, the linebackers, a good bunch. Alfred Williams, Beaker, Terry Johnson, and Canavis McGee. Johnson still playing for Chad Brown, who has mononucleosis. And the defensive backs are McLuhan, Figures, James, and Thomas. The first three are seniors playing their last home game for CU. Kansas State with another first down from the 47. This time the draw goes to Pat Jackson. Wiggles his way across midfield down to the Buffs 46. Greg Thomas stopped him. Pat Jackson some 34 yards away coming into uh, today's contest from going over 1,000 yards. He's a nice compliment back, especially for a good passing team. I was going to say Kansas State an improved football team this year. They've already won five games. They beat Iowa State. They beat Oklahoma State. They lost to Kansas 27 to 24. So they really have taken tremendous strides in getting this thing turned around. You, you take a look at the rushing yards, and uh, it's been an improved Kansas State Wildcat team this year without question. Second and three from the bus 46. Jackson again, this time racked up quickly by the nose tackle, Joel Steve. If you watch the Wildcats offense and you see those tight ends standing up with their hands and their hips and you say, where have I seen that before? Iowa runs the very same offense. Bill Snyder, of course, came off the Hawkeye staff and he brought a lot of things that Iowa has done recently. Of course, those tight ends stand up in the hate and cry offense all the time. Third and three for the Wildcats. Ten and a half minutes left in this first quarter. Another quick pass. Again to Michael Smith. And he is inside the Buffs 40-yard line. Well, this is just a good job of picking up the blitz. Colorado trying to put pressure on Straw up the middle. Smith reads the blitz, as does Carl Straw. And the side adjust with the receiver breaking to the outside. James has to run all the way from his free safety spot and make the tackle. And that's one as an offense you hope you can make a guy miss because had Smith made James miss, he was off to the races. Michael Smith, an honorable mention All-American last year. The only all-conference player for Kansas State. Why? Well, he made 70 catches last year outrageous for a college wide receiver first and ten from the Buffs 40 yard line straw looked like he wanted to hold back on that pass the ball went far out of bounds incomplete keep in mind one of the reasons Kansas State is going so much to the short pass is because straw does have a badly bruised shoulder suffered last week against Oklahoma. They do like to go long to Hernandez and Smith. We might not see too much of that today, however, because of Straw's condition. Second and ten. Another dump off. This time to the tight end, Russ Campbell. There's a fumble. Greg Beekert, it looks like Greg Beekert, number 19 for the Buffs, fell on that ball. And the officials are pointing the other way. It's the CU Buffs with the ball. Well, this was a well-set-up screen. Initially, the tight end screen in the flat. Campbell had a chance to duck behind the blockers and, and pick up some additional yardage, but he gets blasted. You can see Campbell just fall back, watch him cut into the left, and he really takes a shot right there by Greg Thomas. Thomas puts his hat right on the ball. And Canavis McGee, I think, comes up with the fumble recovery. You're right. Beekert and Thomas hit him. Canavis McGee, the fumble recovery. So the Buffs will start with it first and 10 at their own 35-yard line. Boy, Campbell holding that ball out in front of him was just asking for it. Hagen fumbles the ball. Bounces right back into his arms. And Darian gets it across the 40 to the 42. A first down for the Buffs. <laughs> 
Well, this is the kind of play when you drop the football, you're just hoping that you drop it on the side and not on the tip. You hope that you get a, a good bounce. And Hagen, with his excellent hands, he reaches down and picks it up and winds up picking up some seven yards. Now, you could stand on that field and drop a ball 100 times, <laughs> and 99 out of 100 times it will not bounce right back up into your hands. And also, you don't even miss a stride picking it up. Second and four. This is the enemy. Picks up the first down and a little more across midfield. Down to the Kansas State 48. Enan Oka and C.J. Masters bring him down. Well, a free safety against option football makes a lot of tackles, and Masters is going to be involved many, many times. You can see there as he closes in on Eric Bienemy. Bienemy kind of hops into the hole, and he really has great vision. He picks up the free safety. He also can see when the pursuit comes from the inside. Looks like Eric may have uh, shaken himself up just a little bit in the last run. C.J. Masters has four or five tackles already, which means the Buffs are getting into the secondary quickly. Hagan looking deep again. Overthrown at the intended receiver, Mike Pritchard. I'm a little surprised. The Buffs, not a team to go deep too often, have already tried it three times in their first two series. And Green had excellent coverage that time on Pritchard. Mike was never open. Well, you want to do a lot of things in your last game because... Obviously, Notre Dame will have this film. You want to show them that you're not afraid to throw the ball deep, that you've got good speed on the outside, you can get deep. They already know you can run the football. All they got to do is watch last year's first half of the Orange Bowl. Second and 10 for the Buffs from the Kansas State 48. The option. Hagan keeps it. A lot of room. A nice cut back and down to the 25-yard line. Darian Hagan looks to be in primo shape today. Well, what a great block by George Hemingway. Watch the fullback the whole way. Watch number 22 as he leads Hagan up the field. You lose him a little bit, but right there as he knocks the legs out from underneath C.J. Masters, that's the block that Hagan has to have. Of course, then Darian is, is athletically talented enough to make something good happen, but George Hemingway, a great job of leading that quarterback to the hole and then turning up the field, and the first white jersey that shows, he knocked down. Does Darian Hagan look like he's running as well as he has all year? Absolutely. Looks good. First and 10 from the Kansas State 25. This is Chucky Snowden in the ballgame, giving the enemy a rest. And Snowden gets five yards on his first carry of the afternoon. We've talked a lot about Chuck Snowden, a slasher. He's going to be a different style of running back that in the next few years than what you uh, have grown accustomed to with Eric Bieniemy. He's a little bit taller than, than A.B., Reminds me a little bit, and certainly not to compare him to Chuck Foreman, but the same style of running. Snowden grew up right in the backyard here. Went to Fairview High School. Led the Knights to a state championship a few years ago. Second and five. Snowden again. Close to the first down. Right around the 15-yard line. Call it third down with one yard to go. Snowden will come out of the game, and Eric Bieniemy will come back in. Here's how the Wildcats do it on third down. Pretty well. Opponents have converted just 34 percent of the time. No, these are certainly not the mild cats anymore. All right, we're going to take a timeout on the field. We'll be right back. Light beer with big draft taste. Cold filter, genuine draft light. Yeah, we're gonna need some help up here. Over. After millions and millions of hours in the air, after 17 years of staying up all night, every night, so that your packages can be delivered overnight to any address in America. Federal Express has become the first service company ever to win the Malcolm Baldrige National Quality Award. It's the highest honor in American business. And just how did we do this? By being absolutely, positively the best in the business. We create
could spend 30 seconds talking about the 1991 Pontiac Grand Am, priced at just $94.24. But we'll let the Grand Am speak for itself. Hello. 1991 Pontiac Grand Am at 94.24. Plus, qualified first-time new car buyers can get an additional 600 cash back for the ride of your life. See your local Colorado Pontiac dealer. Well, Eric Bieniemy, the nation's leading rusher, and he's got uh, certainly a different style for footwear. That's black tape. He colors it black after he tapes his ankles. He spats, and then he uh, uses the magic marker and. Uh, I'm not sure what that looks like, but it certainly works. Why do you tape your shoes up like that? It gives you a little support, your ankles some more support. Also looks good. Third and one for the Buffs. The enemy gets the carry and gets it the, picks up the first down. Inside the 15-yard line. You might have also noticed that Eric Bianami has a little extra padding on his back there. He did suffer some bruised ribs last week. Well, previous to that carry, the Buffs have been very successful on the ground. They're averaging 10 and a half yards a carry so far today. They're already close to the 100-yard mark. And the enemy is averaging close to six yards per carry on the season. So it, just, it goes to show you the, the type running attack this team really has. First and 10 for the Buffs from the Kansas State 14. The pitch to the enemy. Gets it to the 10 before he's knocked out of bounds by C.J. Masters. Eric Bieniemy, in every game but one this year, has gone for 100 yards or more. And in that one game he didn't against Texas, he ran for 99 yards. A look at Bill Snyder, and uh, again, a terrific job in Manhattan. Let's face it, apathy, really, for the Kansas State football team the last few years. And it, it's tough to overcome that. It's tough to not only generate enough wins, but just to, to have enough enthusiasm. You can have a viable program. Second and six for the Buffs. Hagan goes over the middle. Nobody anywhere near that pass, however. And it'll be third down. Colorado trying to tune up the passing game. And that man knows that in order to beat teams like Notre Dame and Nebraska and Oklahoma, the very elite teams in the country, you've got to have a good mixture of the pass and the run. Let's go to Mark McIntosh for more on the sideline. Thanks, Dave. You've been talking about K-State. You know, earlier in the year, they had victories over Western Illinois, New Mexico State, and New Mexico. A lot of people said, well, anybody can beat cupcakes like that. But Schneider was saying the main thing we need right now is victories. These guys got to start tasting victory, know what it's like, and it's worked out well. Third and six, Darian Hagan into the end zone again. His second rushing touchdown of the day. And again, a great job up front by the CU line. And Kansas State is trying to take away the pitch man, and so Hagan is able to cut up and make positive yards. He's done that much of the first quarter. Well, you know he's healthy when he's running the ball up the middle and putting his head down to go into the end zone. You can see the push from the gold helmets really establishing the line of scrimmage and Hagan into the secondary. In the last few yards just doing it by himself. Darian Hagan, last year the Sporting News Player of the Year in college ball. Flags on the field during the extra point attempt. Let's see what the call is. Dead ball. Offsides. On the defense. The option rest with the offense. Penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. Tony Williams came across, and Jay Lewenberg, the center, wound up sitting right in the right in his fanny after the uh, contact. Buff trying to make it a 14 to nothing lead. Jim Harper doing the kicking. Charles Johnson will hold. And it's blocked, but the ball still gets through the goal post. The extra point attempt blocked, but it's still good. And the Buffs take a 14 to nothing lead with 6.28 to go in the first quarter. And another fine drive by Colorado. And again, Darian Hagan off to one of his better starts of the year. Well, the when Buffs off to one of their better starts of the year. They don't usually jump out like this. When you play an option team, you certainly try to take away what that particular team does best. And if you go back and you chart 
this football team, it's Eric Bieniemy between the tackles or Bieniemy on the pitch. Yes, they slide the fullback in there from time to time, but Hagen really has not been a contributor, at least running the football too much in recent recent weeks. So Kansas State comes in, they say, we've got to stop Bieniemy, you've got to watch the fullback. And what they've done in the early going, they've completely forgotten about Hagen, and he is an explosive kid. I mean, he has been hurt a lot this year, but certainly capable and healthy, and he looks to be uh, healthy today. 10 plays, 65 yards to the drive. And Colorado off to a, as you mentioned last, pretty good start. You make a great point. If you look at the films of CU previous to this game, they have not gone to the eye bone much, and they have not run Hagen much, and it's because of his health. And now this is an extra added dimension for a team that's already ranked second in the country. And, and again, it gives teams like Notre Dame, their next opponent, something else to worry about. You know they understand what the enemy means to the team, and they'll try to stop the fullback. And yes, Hagen can throw, but now Hagen's involved in running the football as well. And they've got to uh, they've got to force themselves to contend with that. Jim Harper, the junior for the Buffs, will be kicking off to a couple of freshmen, Andre Coleman and Kit Rawlings. And Harper really gets a lot of leg into this one. Out of the end zone, Kansas State will start with it at its own 20. We have 6:28 to go in this first quarter. A couple of scores for you. Baylor leading Rice 17 to nothing. Syracuse 31, West Virginia 7. That's in the third quarter. Clemson 14, South Carolina 3. Less. Yale leading Harvard at halftime 20 nothing. And Illinois 10, Indiana 7. That's also in it. I had that Yale Harvard game pegged. I have never seen a Yale Harvard game. I'd like to <laughs> sometime. Carl Straw with that bruised right shoulder still in a quarterback for Kansas State. When you're dumping off passes quickly, as he has today, you don't get hit all that much. And that's another reason they're running that type of offense. To the tight end, Beekert hits him, and we'll get a flag here. Beekert hit him a little early. Well, Campbell started on the right side of the formation, just a simple crossing route. He'll come from your right to the left. Straw tries to get in the ball, and Beekert hits him early, and... Of course, the linebackers in a zone drop. They just wait for somebody to come into their territory. Pass interference on the defense. Spot foul. First down. Baker got there just a little bit early. It is an automatic first down for Kansas State. They gained two yards out of that play. Speaking of other games today, I think a lot of people here are keeping an eye on uh, Notre Dame hosting Penn State. from the 22. The give goes to Jackson. He gets nowhere. Joel Steed and Leonard Renfro putting up quite a wall there. Renfro still nursing a bit of an Achilles heel problem. Well enough to play, however. In fact, the buffs are, are healthy altogether. Let's go down to the field right now and Mark McIntosh. You might be able to see right now trainer Dave Burton working on center Jay Lewenberg. One thing the Buffs want to avoid today is injuries, but on the last extra point, Jay Lewenberg hurt his left ankle. He says he heard something pop in there. Dave Burton is taping him up. He should go back in the ball game, and hopefully we'll be all right. Back upstairs. Carl Straw, sideline pattern, incomplete. Just when I mentioned they're healthy, we see a shot of Jay Lewenberg getting tended to. Straw's a pretty good quarterback. He's at his best when you, you allow him to stand in the pocket. When you force him to move from side to side, it really throws off his accuracy. And when you can't run the football, or you really haven't established the running game, you've got to be a pretty good throwing outfit to move the ball against CU. Teams early have done it, but not many have done it without at least a semblance of a running game. Third and 11 for Kansas State. On that last play, defensive lineman Gary Howe might have gotten a hand on that pass attempt. Alfred Williams with pressure. Straw gets it off over the head of the intended receiver, Frank Hernandez. Incomplete, and we'll have our first punt of the afternoon. Dave McLuhan was the pass defender there. Did a good job on Hernandez. Well, last week, the Buffs rotated punt returners, Dave McLuhan and Rico Smith. Today, it'll be McLuhan starting out back there. 
And the punter for Kansas State is Chris Cobb. Averages a little more than 37 yards a punt. McLuhan, one of the better punt returners in the nation. 15 yards a return. Cobb gets off a nice kick. McLuhan will return it. He has room across midfield, across the 40, inside the 35-yard line. John Butler finally stopped him, but not before McLuhan brings it deep into Kansas State territory with 5.21 to go in the quarter. The Buffs lead it, 14 to nothing. I was sold on Toyotas after my 83 4x4. I got over half of what I paid for it when I traded it in, and I figured it cost me about $75 a month to own. The cost of owning a new Toyota just dropped even more, thanks to the biggest option package discounts in Toyota history. Right now, you can save up to $1,000 on option packages on the affordable Corolla and up to $900 on tough Toyota trucks. So now, the cars that cost less to own cost even less than ever to buy. Drop by your Toyota dealer now, and the cost of owning a new Toyota is dropping. I'm Carl Mecklenburg, and I'm dressed for action. And I'm Carl Mecklenburg, and I'm dressed for action. And no matter what I wear, I know I'll find the fit, quality, and service I'm looking for at Kaufman's. I'm hard to fit. Never could find what I wanted. Now I buy my clothes right off the rack. And there's so much to choose from, I can't decide what to wear. Now cut that out. For the right fit, be sure to stop. The Kaufman's tall and big shop. Let's talk about the anatomy of a coat. Sleeves keep our arms warm. Buttons and zippers shield us from wind. And hoods protect our heads. Yes, coats are important, but not everyone can afford one. So donate to Coats for Colorado. Drop off your old coats at any dependable cleaners and you'll get 25% off the cleaning of your own coat. Because the long and the short of it is, nobody should face a winter without a coat. So give to Coats for Colorado. One of the things that makes Dave McLuhan such a great punt returner, he sets up his blockers. Look to the right of the screen, Chris Patterson running down the linebacker, number 34. This little move right there will freeze Patterson. Rose circles behind him, gets a good block. Ronnie Bradford with a good block. you got to do a little bit on your own, and McLuhan has shown that ability. But setting up blocks as a punt returner is one of the keys to really being successful, and both Rico Smith and Dave McLuhan have had their moments. 34-yard punt return for McLuhan. It's first and 10 for the Buffs. Complete to Pritchard. Stays on his feet. Drags a couple defenders down to the 17-yard line. Roderick Green grabs him by the ankles. Finally stops him. Well, Hagan looked like uh, one of the nasty boys here. This thing gets out there in a hurry. Pritchard, you can see the cornerback doesn't even have a chance to close the gap. Green with the tackle. Pritchard is a threat to score on every play, so you have to get him the football. Mike, this year, every time he's touched the ball, has averaged 19 yards. First and 10 from the 17. This is Biennemi. Bounces his way down to the 11. Call it a gain of six. Evan Simpson, 315 pounds of Evan Simpson, brings Biennemi down. Well, how would you like to feed him every day? Eric Bieniemy came into the day 175 yards short of rushing for 4,000 yards in his CU career. Only three men have done that in CU history. Second and four for the Buffs. 4 to go in this first quarter. That's George Hemingway's first run of the day. He gets a yard, and Simpson falls on him. Well, you can see Kansas State is really concentrated on stopping the fullback and making sure they take the pitch man away. Hemingway's a guy you have to give the football to four or five times a game because he keeps that defense honest, and he keeps those inside linebackers there for a split second so they can't run to the option wings. See you doing a great job today of mixing things up. Kansas State doesn't know what is going to be thrown at him, it seems. Third and three from the 10 yard line. The enemy. Brought down at the 10. No gain. 
James Inanoka rode him like a rodeo rider. And there's one of the linebackers that got good penetration. The enemy again on the lead. Tries to follow Hemingway, but good penetration forces Eric to bounce out and Enid Oakett right there, as linebackers are supposed to be, with the tackle. Like wrestling a steer down to the ground. Jim Harper will attempt the field goal for the Buffs. This is a 28-yard attempt. And Harper's got it. And the Buffs go up 17 to nothing with 2.53 to go in the first quarter. Jim Harper now 14 for 21 on the year in field goal attempts. Talk about the success this team has had. Jim Harper, one of the J.C. transfers. They really have uh, hit the jackpot in terms of what some of those J.C. kids have meant. Rico Smith, another J.C. transfer, has been a valuable addition. This telecast is an exclusive presentation of KCNC-TV and the National Broadcasting Company. It is intended for the private use of our audience only. Any reproduction or rebroadcast of this game without the expressed written consent of KCNC-TV is prohibited. A good look at the head coach, Bill Snyder, and his quarterback, Carl Straw. What a job Bill Snyder has done here. He's in his second year, and the record is 6-15. and 15. It doesn't sound too good, but keep in mind what he was coming into. This year... At five and five, they are close to having their first winning season since 1982. Back to return are Rawlings and Coleman. Rawlings fields at five yards deep. Will not bring it out. Kansas State needs to muster something here quickly, or they're going to find themselves out of this ball game at a very early stage. Boy, if you would tell anybody else around the country that you could come to a football game at the end of November in short sleeves, they'd call you crazy. But here it is. We're lucky. First and ten from the 20. Carl Straw looking things over. Taking his time, we're down to five seconds. He needs to get that playoff in five seconds. And he does. The pitch to Jackson. Tries to turn the corner, but McLuhan knocks him out of bounds at the 22. Kansas State trying to run the football a little bit. As we said, pretty tough to beat this defense if you have to throw the ball all the time, although Kansas State really is a better passing team than running team. The option, straw right to Alfred Williams. He doesn't take the football to him enough, and he allows Alfred almost to play the quarterback and still get involved in playing the pitch bait. When you run the option, you're going to take that football right to the outside guy, force him to stop you, and then pitch it. Second and eight. Folks here at Colson Field doing the wave. We've got another sellout crowd. That's five out of the last six games the Buffs have sold out. Straw's hit. Doesn't get the pass off the way he intended. It was Gary Howe nailing him as he was throwing the ball. And then he helped him up. You know, sometimes quarterbacks kind of like to, to lay down there a little bit and help themselves up. Colorado with a uh, field goal in the last scoring drive. Five plays, 24 yards. And Kansas State, in the hurry-up offense, faces third down and about eight. Well, it's easy to show the team a little courtesy when you're up 17 to nothing in the first quarter. Third and eight. Carl Straw still trying to read the signals that are coming in from the sideline as to what play to call. He actually calls the play at the line of scrimmage without the huddle. More good pressure. This time, Straw gets it off to number 90, the tight end, Al Jones. And he gets it across the 35 before Gary Howe, excuse me, before he's brought down, Gary Howe put the pressure on the quarterback. Good job by Straw as he kind of slides to the left and buys himself some time. Watch Straw back in the pocket. Nothing open. Couple of steps to the left. Gets you a couple more seconds. And there's the pass completion to Al Jones, who just hooked up in the middle of the field. A nice, big, inviting target in Kansas State with a first down. If you give this guy some time, he really can hurt you. They're calling the plays at the line of scrimmage based on what he sees in the secondary. Colorado has gone to a nickel coverage with five defensive backs in the game. Over the middle, complete. 
up to the 48-yard line. That's Frank Hernandez. That's very different, Dave. Going to the line of scrimmage, the coach looks at the defense that is set up and then calls the play in. Is that what you're saying? Well, the quarterback does. The quarterback looks at the defense. And again, just an in pattern here. Nice job by Straw stepping up in the pocket. A good catch by Hernandez. He's at the line of scrimmage now. He looks at the secondary, and he tries to get some sort of pre-snap read. It's what you think the secondary will do. You then will call the play. You audible into the uh, the necessary play. The backs will switch, and away you go. Well, the way I'm seeing it, the coach is also taking a look at the defense and then calling the play into Straw. That's Jackson. Gets it inside the 45-yard line. There is a lot of commotion going on on that field after Kansas State sets up, but it's working. Down to the 43-yard line. It'll be second and one. Now, this is the quarterback. There's not a coach signaling in place. He, you're signaling the set behind you, but the quarterback's got to make the right read as to what the defense is. I see. So it's a combination of both. Sure. They're calling the play in tandem early. This is Jackson inside the 40 down to the 39 and another first down for Kansas State Leonard Renfro the tackle to the coach of the field may signal in the formation that he wants to get in but the quarterback is the only guy that can really see what the secondary alignment will be in terms of the pre snap rate the coach is going to have a tough time seeing that from the sideline what if we get a shot of that the coach now will signal in there's Carl Straw looking like Darth Vader I hate playing quarterbacks, but he can't see where he's looking. I think secondary guys like to see those eyes. Well, about five people on Kansas State's offense just shifted. Jackson will run it. Dion figures nails him at the 36. Gain of about three. We're down to 45 seconds left in this first quarter. And again, because they don't get in a huddle, you limit Colorado defensively in terms of their substitution you can still call different defensive coverages but you make them do it on the run and you make them stay with those people the same people on the field he's just got the formation now he'll call the play wide receivers have to come in tight because they can't hear the tight end will get it he'll tell the wide receiver on the wide side this is like a fire drill down on the field for Kansas State second and six Straw with a deep drop. Ooh. They set up for a screen to Jackson, but CU had it well covered. I tell you, Greg Thomas was about to make the reception and go the other way with it from his free safety spot. Straw trying to draw the rush to him and dump the screen. I think what we're what he's talking about there is the noise level. Can he hear the play? And of course, the referee is the one that has to make the call. Today's referee, Larry Fisher, and he decides if it's in fact too noisy for the quarterback to go ahead with the play. I tell you, you have to be a well-disciplined team to attempt to do what Kansas State is doing on every play. Watch all the men shift as Straw looks to the sideline. Well, he might not do it this time because he's setting up over center. Third and six. Jackson on the draw. Close to the first down. Joel Steed, the tackle. Very close to the first down. It looks like he's about two and a half inches short. <laughs> you have better than better eyes than I do, Mr. Logan. <laughs> See if I'm right. Pretty good call there. Third and long. Colorado on the nickel coverage. You slip Jackson, the running back, up through the middle. You're sure going to get pressure from the outside. You might be right. Two and a half inches. <laughs> I don't know, David. It looks like about three inches to me. I was off there, wasn't I? <laughs> uh, no doubt here you got to go for it. Pretty good drive by Kansas State. You need to answer 17 straight points by Colorado. It's fourth and one. Kansas State needs it, if for nothing else, a confidence boost. Two tight ends in the ballgame now. Campbell and Al Jones. In short yardage situations, they go down to a three-point stance. Official timeout. I believe Carl Straw. No, that's the end of the quarter. The end of the quarter. CU leads it 17 to nothing. We'll be right back at Folsom Field.
Silver can bring back the power. And remember, when you drive, make every gallon count. Bronco fans, get front row seats and see the Dan Reed Show live and in person. All you have to do is write Dan Reed Show tickets. P.O. Box 5012, Denver, Colorado 80217. Watch Bob's Colorado, Sunday at 5 and 10 on News 4. Today's game is being brought to you by Grease Monkey and by Samsonite. Both proud companies for Colorado. And also by Taco Bell, by U.S. West, and by Miller Genuine Draft Light. Les Shapiro and Dave Logan back at Folsom Field. And we always know where Dave Logan is on Sunday night. He's in our KCNC studio hosting the Bill McCartney Show. Sundays at 1035, following the News 4 Late Edition, right here on Channel 4, the home of the CU Buffs. Boy... It must be easy to do a coach's show when you're 9-1-1, one one, huh? I, I was thinking about this. I talked to Bill. We've had one losing coach's show in two years. That's, uh, that's kind of easy duty, isn't it? That is amazing. Over the last two regular seasons, the Buffs are 21-1. and one. Kansas State going for it on fourth down. They need one yard. Straw with the sneak. And it looks like he picks it up. It is a first down. Carl Straw gets it on the quarterback sneak. And Kansas State down to the Buffs 29-yard line. Here are your first quarter stats. Both teams really have had pretty good success moving the football. Kansas State's turned it over one time. See you with over 100 yards rushing in the first quarter. Almost 200 yards of total offense. And Kansas State has uh, put together a pretty nice drive here. One running back behind Straw. Jackson. Action Jackson, as they like to call him in Manhattan. He's got a lot of action this afternoon. Straw on a down and out pattern to Frank Hernandez. That's complete. Dave McLuhan on the coverage. But lots of games before the ball is snapped. Colorado walks up. They fake the blitz. Kansas State audibles. Colorado walks back off. And the nice little quick out pass by Carl Straw. When you play a team that can throw the football, you have to give them a lot of looks defensively. You can't sit in one coverage because they're much too good for that. You fake the blitz, you fake the safety. The corner walks up and walks off. You're always moving in the defensive secondary. They gained six yards last play, so it's second and four. Straw complete for the tight end, Russ Campbell, inside the 10-yard line, and that'll be another Kansas State first down. Straw getting that pass off with a lot of pressure. It was Gary Howe in his face again. You see Campbell, a fairly productive tie it in. This is a play that Iowa State hurt Colorado with. The play action fake to one side, the tie it in up the seam to the other. And Figures and Thomas, along with Beaker, finally pull him down. First and 10 for Kansas State from the 10 yard line. And another out pattern. This time it's dropped by the normally reliable Michael Smith. Catch they should have made. They had trips to the right side as Smith tried to stop and almost regain his balance and in the meantime hold on to the football. Had Straw led Smith to the sideline, he might have scored in that play. Very unusual for him to drop a ball like that. He is seventh on the all-time pass-catching list in Big 8 history. 5'10", 155-pound junior. will be back next year. Second and 10 for Kansas State. This time to give to the fullback, Rod Schiller, but Gary Howe is there to stop him. Howe very active today. 
Of course, we've talked about Gary Howe much of this year. He's a guy that doesn't stay blocked very long. The left side of your screen fights off the block and gets to Schiller. A well-designed play, Kansas State, with three receivers to the right side, trying to outflank Colorado, make them shift defensively, but Howe got good penetration. You know, Howe has had such a good season, but you don't hear his name mentioned a lot by NFL scouts. Why is that? Well, he's undersized. He's, he's a six-foot defensive tackle. And I think he's a chance to play in the NFL, especially at Nose. They're in 11. Straw dumps it off, almost intercepted by Greg Beekert. If anybody had a chance at it, it was him. You know, Beekert read Straw the entire way, knew the football was coming, probably was saying, here it comes, here it comes, as he's going down, and then he just couldn't hang on. Linebackers don't get many opportunities like that. I'm sure Greg realizes it. Kansas State will try to put its first points of the board up today. Tate Wright, the field goal attempt, approximately 28 yards. He is 7 for 13 on the year. And it is perfect. Kansas State with its first three points of the day. The Buffs lead it 17 to 3. We have 12.38 to go in this first half. Come winter, you see most sports cars at their worst, if you see them at all. Unless your sports car is an all-wheel drive Eagle Talon TSI, with 195 horses to keep you dashing through the snow. To go anywhere, anytime, Talon TSI. Reasons to own one keep piling up. Now, save on a special allotment of Talons at your Jeep and Eagle dealer. See your local Jeep Eagle dealer. Stand right here for me, okay? okay. Go ahead and get your hands out of your pockets. Go ahead and stand, face me. Put your heels and toes together. All the way together. All the way together. You see my pen right here in front of your eyes? Yeah. I want you to follow my pen, okay? With your eyes only. Okay, sir. Go ahead and uh, turn around. You have anything in, in a, a gun? No. Go ahead and turn around. Give me hands to the back. Okay, you're on the rest for the WI, sir, okay? We're going to go downtown for intox laser test, okay? CU has already clinched at least a tie for the Big 8 Conference title. They're going to the Orange Bowl. They're off to a pretty good start today. Looking for that outright title in the Big 8. A 17-3 lead. Mike Pritchard back to receive the kick for Kansas State. Pritchard takes it at the 5. Across the 25, brought down at the 29. Danny Needham stopped him before he could get to that sideline and take off. Pretty impressive by Kansas State. 15 plays, they went 69 yards. They were forced to kick the 28-yard uh, field goal, but they kept the Colorado offense off the field for over five minutes, which was one of the goals Bill Snyder had established coming into today's game. Darian Hagan at quarterback. Looking to throw. A wide open tight end. Sean Brown. Across midfield down to the 46. We mentioned the J.C. Tra transfers and Jim Harper. Also Rico Smith. This is the third of three. And Sean Brown really has done a great job stepping in for John Bowman. A good throw by Hagan. But what a catch by Sean Brown. As he leans down. Keeps his feet and picks up a first down. Well, he showed us great hands last week. Nice touchdown catch against Oklahoma State at the shoe top. I'll tell you, if you've got a tight end that can catch the football, if you look at, look at his numbers for the year, it really makes you a tough team. First and 10 from the 46 of Kansas State. This is Hagan. Goes down at the 35. He could have picked up another couple yards if he hadn't tripped. 
And right now he's making fun of himself for tripping. Let's go down to the field and Mark McIntosh. Thank you very much, guys. You've been talking a lot about the JUCO transfers that have helped out the Buffs this year. Rico Smith, Jimmy Harper, Sean Brown. We'll take a closer look at those three at halftime. A little feature on the JUCO jump start that has helped the Buffs this year to that fine record and the Big 8 championship. Back upstairs. All right, looking forward to that at halftime. We are 11 minutes and 50 seconds away from halftime. The Buffs with another first down. Hagen to a wide open Pritchard. He's got so much room, he can dance around and put a few moves on before he can bring it inside the 20. We're well, giving him a little too much room. Well, the reason he's got so much room, again, I mean, the pass, the Rob Dibble pass, this thing gets <laughs> out there quickly. And Hagen, you can see once he catches it, he's got green in a mess. Nice cutback move. Mike Pritchard is the big play guy for this team, and I think NFL scouts envision him as somewhat of an all-around player capable of playing inside. He can play outside. He can even spot duty at running back if he has to. The enemy rolls his way down to the 15. Well, you're right. Pritchard can do it any number of ways. He scored five touchdowns catching the ball. He scored four touchdowns running the ball, and he's always a threat when he's running back kicks. And he also blocked. That time he uh, got into the middle of the cornerback Roger Green and Green didn't particularly like it. All around player. This value growing and growing with each passing week. Should be a pretty high draft choice in the NFL next year. Well, Darian Hagan just did it. He broke the single season record for passing yardage in one season. And here he is running the ball down to the 11. He'll be short of the first down. Darian Hagan, a junior out of California, a journalism major. Last week he set the record for touchdown passes in a game with four of them against Oklahoma State. And he may have injured himself. It's Charles Johnson. CJ is going to come in the game. Darian, with his helmet off, trotted off the field and went right to the bench. Charles Johnson. Into the ball game at quarterback for the Buffs. Another junior. He does the safe thing, gives to the enemy, and Eric takes it down to the five. That is a first down. Buffs already with a 17 to three lead. Under 10 minutes to go in the half. That's a good look at Darian Hagan getting worked on. Looks like he uh, may have got jabbed in the eye. Everybody right now counting how many days till New Year's <laughs> for any of these buffs who might get injured to recover in time for that game against Notre Dame. That is Charles Johnson doing it himself. Charles Johnson, who just came into the ball game for an injured Darian Hagan, takes well, it in, and the oranges come splattering onto the field. Last time we saw Charles Johnson score, there was a lot of conversation as to if he got in or not on fifth down, but easily that time, very patient on the option attack, cut it up just at the right moment, and went in standing. Public address announcer right now telling folks not to throw oranges onto the field. Charles Johnson's second touchdown run of the year. The other one is Dave told you coming in that controversial game at Missouri. We've got a timeout on the field now while everybody starts picking up pieces of orange. It's a good thought but it could pose some dangers to a lot of people down there. An orange being hurled from about 50 yards away could hurt if it hits you. Harper in for the extra point. And the Buffs take a 24 to 3 lead with 9.35 to go in the first half. We'll be right back at Folsom Field. Thank you. 
Taco Supreme, Nacho Supreme, three new menus. Somebody tell Louise. Whoa! Fifty nine, seventy nine, ninety nine. Run for the border, don't waste time. Three new menus, Taco Bell done it again. Wow! Before you men go on this mission, I'm taking you to the best French restaurant in the city. Somewhere a small restaurant is missing a big sale. It was Brisbane. But U.S. West Communications can keep your small business from missing those big sales. How about Brisbane? Yeah! Find out how to protect those orders from going to the competition. Call U.S. West, making the most of your time. This is it. There's only one light beer with big draft taste. Cold filter, genuine draft light. Yeah, we're gonna need some help up here, over. There's your score. Buffs haven't done it a lot this year, but today they are off to a very fast start against Kansas State, 24-3. Harper kicking off, Coleman and Rawlings back to receive it. This is Coleman, lets it bounce away. Harper not giving them much of a chance to do anything with the ball on kickoffs. So Kansas State will have it at its own 20. Colorado offensively so far here in the first half, very, very impressive. They've scored in all four possessions. Three touchdowns, one field goal, all the touchdowns by the quarterbacks. Charles Johnson even gets in the act here. Good job of allowing that play to really develop. 71 yards, seven plays, a little over three minutes, and CU has a 24 to 3 lead. Why, nice to know you can rely on a backup like Charles Johnson if your number one man gets hurt. He's really done a good job for the Buffs this year, especially with all of Hagen's injuries. Kansas State, meanwhile, has the ball. Using that unconventional method of calling plays. It's waited too long to call it, I think. The clock ran down. Dead ball. Delay of game. Offense. Five yards. Repeat first down. See, the problem, Kansas State's taking too long in the huddle. Then once they come to the line of scrimmage, having to call the audibles. And again, the tight end has to hear it. He then turns and talks to the widest wide receiver. If they're going to do that, they got to get at the line of scrimmage and give themselves about 15 or 16 seconds. Good job this time because the uh, clock now at 15 and counting. Now why bother calling a play in the huddle if you're changing it every time you walk up to the line of scrimmage? First and 15. Straw over the middle. Once again, the tight end, Campbell, wide open, gets away. Up across midfield. I think just about every buff had a shot at him there before he finally is brought down at the CU 45-yard line. Well, the tight end again has hurt Colorado this year. This time, play action fake to Campbell's side. He'll come from the left side and just slide right up the seam. Straw with a good pass, and Campbell is like a big old buffalo trying to get him down. No pun intended. Nobody can tackle him until Beaker going for the football. Finally just grabs the football, and Campbell hangs on and goes to the ground. 40-yard gain. Big kid, 245 pounds. That's why the two safeties bounced right off him. Tim James and Greg Thomas couldn't bring him down. A first down for Kansas State. This is Jackson. Gets a couple. Under the nine-minute mark in the first half. Kansas State needs 240 yards passing here today to break their school record. They've averaged close to 240 per week. They've got some excellent receivers, and Straw so far has been able to hang in there. We told you earlier he's got a very sore right shoulder. He's the second most prolific passing quarterback in Kansas State history behind only Lynn Dickey, who went on to have a very productive career for the Green Bay Packers. Second and eight. And a loss on the play there. Canavis McGee in 
to stop Jackson for that loss. Let's go down to the field and Mark McIntosh. Thanks, guys. A couple of plays ago, Russ Campbell had that big gain. He had one very similar last week against Oklahoma. Caught one over the middle, broke a few tackles, and was loose 30 yards behind everybody. It ended up being a 75-yard reception, but he got caught from behind by the Oklahoma defenders. Not a lot of speed, but he's a big, burly guy that can make the catch. There's a kid, 245 pounds. He averages 17 yards per catch. This crowd really giving the business to Kansas State's offense right now. It's third and 11. Straw puts it up for grabs. Incomplete. He found Michael Smith on the sideline, but Smith couldn't get his feet down, or at least one foot down, soon enough. Well, good time by Carl Straw. You'll see all of a sudden in the middle of the screen, he gets pressured outside Terry Johnson in his face. This is a good throw. Unfortunately, Smith not able to keep a foot in, in bounds. Jeff Bruner popped up and forced Straw to move to his right where Terry Johnson forced him to throw. And you can see very close as Smith can't get that left foot down in time. Flag on the play. Michael Smith pleading his case. He felt he had a foot down in bounds. Could be a legal man downfield. When it takes that long and your quarterback rolls, sometimes you get one of those offensive linemen down the field trying to knock somebody off their feet. Well, Kansas State is bringing the punting unit onto the field. Ineligible downfield against the offense. Decline. Fourth down. Fourth down. Kansas State will punt. That's Chris Cobb. And Rico Smith back to receive. Smith did a great job last week in his only extensive outing as a punt return. Nice kick, kind of a touch punt, if you will, by Cobb. The ball rolls out of bounds inside the bus 10 yard line. It'll be placed at about the eight. Cobb took just enough off that kick. Made it work. Tonight on Channel 4, catch the beat. Broncos beat. Peter Rogat and Jim Ryan will bring you up to date on all the latest Bronco news and give you an inside preview of tomorrow's game against the Chicago Bears. That's Broncos beat tonight at 6.30 right here on Channel 4, your Broncos station. A few scores around the country. Maryland leading Virginia now in the third quarter, 35 to 28. Georgia Tech 35, Wake Forest nothing. Syracuse 31, West Virginia 7. Well, here's good news for Buffs fans. Darian Hagan back in the ball game at quarterback for CU. Got poked in the eye a couple of series back. Now he's back there, taking the snap and giving it to Bienemy. And Bienemy rides a couple of defenders up across the 15-yard line. Call it a gain of seven. Seven minutes, 15 seconds to go in this first half. Buffs with a 24 to three lead. 1985, Colorado went to the wishbone. A lot of people said that was not the, uh, the thing to do. Since that time, they are 48, 21 and one. Morning against the black team. They've been able to control the football. They've been able to certainly regain their competitive edge, which back in the early 80s, they did not have. And they've been able also to recruit players to that kind of offense. Good running backs, very good, nimble, quick quarterbacks. You see Bill McCartney urging these guys to get back. He's saying, well, how far do we have to get back here? And back is about as far as I'm going to go. Of course, Bill, you can't win that one. Coaches never like to be told to get back. They usually turn around and tell an assistant coach to have get those guys back. Assistant coaches yell at the players. Players don't have anybody yelling. Looks so good. They did it I think they call that passing the buck. <laughs> yeah. All right, it'll be second and four for the Buffs from their own 15-yard line. Two wide receivers in the game. But the give goes to Eric Bieniemy, and he's up to the 19-yard line. He's very close to the first down. Shut up. There's somewhat of a new wrinkle, a play that CU has not run many times this year. Garden pulling on the trap. They're not a big trap team. They're usually just a straight-ahead man-on-man blocking team. But every little wrinkle now in the season presents problems for 
Notre Dame because they have to certainly go back and look at all these films and try to get prepared for this team defensively. And the bus once again with a two wide receiver set. Rico Smith and Mike Pritchard. On first down, Hagan. Over the middle, a nice catch by Hemingway. Up to the 48-yard line. George Hemingway, his 14th catch of the year. Danny Needham wrestles him to the ground. Well, Hemingway, who, who used to play tight end in this offense, really helps them from the backfield up the seam on the left side. You see him beat the linebacker, and then he's rumbling for the first down. Good job by George Hemingway as he avoided the contact by the linebacker, Viach, and then once he's into the secondary, lots of open room. George is a much better ball player since he's settled down off the field. A great job for them this year. First and 10 from the 49. The enemy, nothing outside and not much inside either. Hits it across midfield, gain of three yards. We're under six minutes in the half. Eric Bieniemy averages almost six yards a carry. Leads the nation with 1,513 yards on the ground this year. And that's after missing the opening game, the Pigskin Classic against Tennessee. Second and seven. Hagan with a gorgeous fake, looking deep. Has Pritchard. Touchdown, Mike Pritchard. Boy, this is just a great throw by Darian Hagan. The thing that made this route possible, he waits and waits and waits for Pritchard to clear that free safety. Watch how long he holds his football. Pritchard running all the way across the field. Now is open because he ran past the free safety. Needham dives. He can't get there. And a 48-yard touchdown catch by Mike Pritchard. What a great job by Darian Hagan holding the football until Pritchard had passed that free safety. And there was nobody rushing Hagan because they thought he had already given it off to a running back. He did a great job hiding that ball behind his thigh. Harper the extra point. And the Buffs with a very cozy 31-3 lead with 5.29 to go in the first half. Here they come now. Well, hold on to your hands, boys, and I'll tell you all about it. Your Colorado GMC truck dealers are having the biggest, easiest truck sale ever. Cool your heels, boys, and take a look. Roll it, Billy. A special allocation of new four-door S15 Jimmies. Any discounts from the dealers? You kidding? That and $1,000 cash back. Sounds too good to last. When's the gig up? Soon, real soon, so you better step on it. Get discounts, cash back, low interest rates. It's the big, easy sale at your local Colorado GMC truck dealer. Well, Taco Bell done it again, my friend. Taco Bell done it again. They got free new menus, free low prices. Goodness gracious, now everything I like is 59, 79, 99. Even Taco, Taco Supreme, Taco Supreme. Three new menus, somebody tell Louise. Whoa! 59, 79, 99. Run for the border, don't waste time. Three new menus, Taco Bell done it again. This commercial does not contain any basketball stars, movie stars, rock stars, or baseball stars. In fact, the only stars in this commercial are these shoes. It's time to turn on the lights. I'm Ed Green, and News 4 invites you to celebrate this 50-year-old tradition. Be here or watch it live on the Colorado Evening News, Thursday, November 29th at 6.30. Plug in to downtown Denver. Jamie Mendez in the middle of your screen, number 32, is a freshman from Youngstown. Mike Pritchard on the right side is going to run right down the middle. Now, Mendez doesn't get enough depth. He's sitting right there. All of a sudden, he realizes I'm in trouble as Pritchard runs all the way across the field and runs away from the cornerback, Needham, who expects Mendez, right there, number 32, to be deep enough to help him. Just a freshman mistake by the Kansas State Wildcats. Five plays and 92 yards, and it took him less than a couple of minutes. Harper kicking off. Andre Coleman decides to run the ball out. Not the smart thing to do. He should have gone down. Instead, he's racked up at the eight-yard line. Roger Yego 
Well, Hagen did a great job here. Waits, he waits, he waits for Pritchard, sees him cross that free safety, lets it go. Tight spiral, and that baby is on the money. Darian Hagen threw for over 200 yards last week. Uh, he's going to be approaching that figure this week if they continue to throw a little bit. Roger Yago from Littleton, Colorado, made the tackle on that kickoff return. Boy, when you can't make a decision, the best thing to do is put that knee down in the end zone. Instead, Kansas State has a first and ten. They're starting with it from their own nine-yard line. And Kansas State a little mixed up as to which personnel should be in the ballgame right now. Yeah, they only had ten guys on the field. Not a very comforting thought for a quarterback who's trying to stay alive. Russ Campbell, the tight end, was supposed to be in on that play, but only came running in after Kansas State had already lined up to take the snap. Well, we mentioned earlier, Darian Hagan already today has set the single season record for CU for passing yards. He is one touchdown pass away from tying Steve Vogel in the Buffs record book for touchdown passes in one season. The record is 12. Hagan has 11. Let's go down to Mark McIntosh. Thanks, guys. 31-3, to three, but don't think the Buffs are going to sit on it. Bill McCartney just came over to Gary Barnett and said, let's get one more score before halftime. Use those timeouts if you have to. But I want to put one more touchdown or a field goal on the board before we go in for halftime. Back up set. Gary Barnett, Mark is referring to, the quarterback and fullback coach for the Buffs. We said Hagan 237 last week passing. He has 6 of 9 here in the first half for 176 yards and one touchdown. Not a bad first half performance. Best performance of his career came last week, 237 yards passing. That pass by Straw is blocked. Oh. And Straw tried to block Alfred Williams after he threw it. And Except quarterbacks don't do a very good job blocking. You can see him with that injured right arm. Man, Carl Straw took a shot by Alfred Williams right when he tried to release the ball. That's when the quarterback is most vulnerable, when that arm is up in the air. He'll be able to see Williams, which is to his benefit. But Alfred comes from the left side, and right when that pass is delivered, ooh, he gets crunched. That's six foot six, 240-pound Alfred Williams falling on Straw. Straw came in with a badly bruised right shoulder. Let's see if he can throw the ball after that hit. Second and ten. Gets off a zinger to Michael Smith, but it's incomplete. Looks like he's okay. Well, what happens after that last hit? You've got Carl Straw trying to throw the ball backpedaling. You get a little bit antsy and you get gun shy when you stand in there and you really get it handed to you. Now, that time Straw tries to hit the crossing route, but he's doing so while he's moving backwards. Then he gets frustrated. Hurry up with the play. I mean, things just don't go right when you're not having time to throw the ball. Third and ten for KSU. Five eighteen to go in the first half. Fumble in the end zone. Straw better go down. It's fumbled again. Kansas State falls on it, but CU will get two points out of it because it's a safety. Well, we, we said after he was sacked, it really shakes up the confidence of a quarterback. Kansas State didn't get a line properly and really starting to lose what composure they've had in the first half. Straw loses the football. Then he kicks it into the end zone. And at this point, really, they're lucky they don't give up seven points instead of two. Straw picks it up, tries to throw it. The arm isn't going forward as Gary Howe gets to him. Ball is loose, recovered by the Wildcats, but that's going to be two points for the Colorado Buffaloes. Boy, as the song says, when you hot, you hot. And when you're not, you not. CU cheerleaders do push-ups for every point scored. They're going to be arm-weary today. Carl Straw very angry with himself, with his teammates right now. Nothing is going right for the Wildcats. They're down 33-3, to and now they have to kick off to the Buffs again. I'll tell you what, you start banging that quarterback, you start getting in his face and knocking him down, I don't care who he is or how good the passing attack is, when you shake that quarterback up, it starts to go downhill quickly. Chris Cobb is in the game for Kansas State. They get a free kick, and Kansas State has chosen to punt the ball after the safety. 
Dave McLuhan is back to receive the punt. 5-11 to go in the first half. I think everybody, including the people on the CU sideline, are, are, have to be a little surprised at what's transpired today. Kansas State came in here having turned around its reputation as the Wild Cats. Yet here we are, CU holding a 30-point lead, and the first half is far from over. McLuhan back at the 15. It's a good job cutting back across the 40. We have a number of flags on the field. There will be a penalty. Crowd awfully quiet. The crowd can be taken out of the game in, in two ways. Number one, if your team is losing by a lot. Number two, if your team is winning by a lot. And Cliff, right now, their team is During winning. the return, spot foul, 15 yards, first down for the receiving team. Well, they're seeing Colorado, the, the best team in the Big A Conference, if not the country, play up to their ability. And if they do that, even Bill Snyder would readily admit that Kansas State does not have a chance to stay in the game. If you're a Wildcat supporter, you've got to hope that Colorado overlooks you a bit. Maybe they don't come in emotionally prepared, but this has been about as sharp as CU has been in any first half of this year. Absolutely. Possibly in any game this year. They did a real number on, on Kansas. And the Buffs did it again last week, beating Oklahoma State 41-22. to Those have been the only two blowouts of the year so far. Flag on the field as the enemy gets it up to the 25. Well, after this ball game, it looks like CU will win the Big A title outright. They will go into the locker room and get that invitation, the official invitation, to the Orange Bowl. Line judge with the call, and usually when he makes the holding call, it's the outside guy on the line of scrimmage. In that case, Mark Vanderpool, because there was not a tight end. Holding on the offense, 10 yards, repeat first down. With the way things have gone here in the first half, all that will do is give CU a better chance to accumulate more yards because it moves them closer, actually farther away from the end zone. First and 20 for the Buffs from their own 12. Over the middle intended for Pritchard, incomplete. Dave, is it possible because the Buffs are winning so handily right here, they might be getting a little sloppy? Well, it's, it's tough to keep your concentration in a game like this. You're 30 points ahead, and you still have almost five minutes to go in the first half. This is the last game of the year. You're assured of playing for the national championship. So your mind starts to wonder. You start thinking about other things rather than what you should be on the field. Buffs still have the starting unit in the ballgame on offense. What do you think those people are thinking about? The starting unit? No, the fans. How am I going to get to Miami? <laughs> Where do I get my tickets? tickets? What's the phone number? Second and 20. Once again, the enemy. A host of white jerseys. Stack them up at about the 11. It will be third and long for the Buffs. How are you getting to Miami? I, I hope I'm flying. I'm not <laughs> exactly sure. Uh, if need be, uh, Greyhound goes everywhere. Greyhound has uh, some good deals going right now. Absolutely. Third and 19 for CU from their own 13-yard line. 4-10 to go in the half. Over the middle. This is Biennemi. Well, we don't see Eric in a pass-catching role too much, but he does a good job there. And he picks up the first down. And again, a good job by the offensive line affording Hagen protection. Watch this. No white shirts are near Darian Hagen. Slides to his left a little bit. The enemy, the safety valve. And, you know, Eric Bieniemy's caught only one touchdown pass in his career. He's got decent hands. He's going to be uh, called upon next year in the NFL to catch the ball more frequently, but... Did a nice job there hanging on to the football. You can see only 12 catches this year. 
That was his 13th. Buffs have a first down. The enemy will run it. Nice move inside up to the 49-yard line. Another first down. Well, the enemy we talked about has not caught many passes, but he certainly made a lot of folks miss him during his career. If you counted how many missed tackles Eric Bieniemy has caused in four years, you'd be amazed. Watch Danny Needham from the free safety. That's a tackle you're supposed to make. Needham is unblocked as he sprints to the perimeter, but all he can get is a hand on Eric Bieniemy. You can see him saying, which way did he go? First and 10. From the 49, Bieniemy breaks through again. And he has another first down. Mark McIntosh, what do you have down there? Well, you guys have been talking about how well the Buffs are playing in the first half. A good indication of how well they're playing. You might be able to see Tom Rune. He's looking up in the stands. He's bored stiff. He's the Buffs All-American punter. He hadn't broken a sweat all day. They have yet to punt in the first half. Back upstairs. Somebody get that man some reading material. <laughs> first and 10 for the Buffs from the Kansas State 40. Under three minutes to go in the half. They're working the enemy hard. He gets it inside the 35. Call it a gain of seven. Mendez makes the tackle. Upset with himself a little bit because he had one wildcat between himself and the goal line, but everybody having a good time out there. You can see a very loose atmosphere when you're 30 points ahead. Why not? Got 91 yards in the first half on 17 carries. As Les said, he's only been under 100 yards one time this year. He had 99 in Austin, Texas. Second and three for the Buffs from the 33. Hagan throws it behind Pritchard incomplete. A 30-point lead, and they're still throwing the ball. Somebody lost his helmet. Hey, Joe Garden trying to pass block for Darian Hagan was doing so without a hat. They always say offensive linemen are the toughest, and <laughs> that's definitely true. Somebody just gave him the helmet back, and he raised it up to the crowd for the cheers, and they responded. Wow. Joe Garden, candidate for the Outland Trophy, which goes to the best lineman in the country every year. Candidate for the toughest guy in the afternoon here, playing without a helmet on. <laughs> Well, Joe will be the first to tell you he's got a hard head. Third and three from the 33. Well, take your pick. Offsides or illegal procedure? Uh, it's a legal procedure. Brian Campbell jumped. It's going to cost CU five yards. Dead ball. False start. Black. Five yards. Repeat third down. You can see Campbell, who was stepped in as Russ Heasley was injured earlier this year. He's done a great job at the right guard position, but reacting to movement up front. If nothing else went right, he stepped properly with his left leg. Nice to know when a guy like Heasley bruises his shoulder, you have a young man like Brian Campbell who can step in. He's done a great job. Hagan bounces that pass to Mike Pritchard. Normally, you get 75 points for that in the game of softball, but since we're not playing softball, they call it incomplete. That's the first one I've seen today really aim the football. Instead of just rearing back and letting it go, this thing about three yards short. Pritchard's got such good hands to play a little short stuff there, huh? Fourth down for the Buffs. No, they're not going to punt. They're going to go for the field goal, and this will be a 55-yard attempt for Jim Harper. If he hits it, it's his longest field goal of the year. He's got plenty enough leg if he hits it good. He has hit a 54-yarder this year. It's blocked. And it'll roll into the end zone. Harper may be looking for that distance. Didn't get the ball up high enough. Jamie Mendez blocked it. As you mentioned, Les, when you have to get that type distance, you really have to drive the football. You don't get the elevation that you normally get, and well, that's great penetration. I'll tell you what, the, the offensive line, the front, didn't give Harper much of a chance to drive that ball. You can see lots of white jerseys only four yards away from the kicker. So Kansas State will take over at its own 38-yard line. 155 left in the half. The Buffs with a 33-3 lead. 
Carl Straw still in the ball game for K-State. Getting the signal for the play. The formation. Now he calls the plays to the wide receivers. And Two seconds left. And they will get nailed for another delay of game penalty. May have got the timeout before, but it's going to cost him a timeout. See, the coach is not giving him the, the formation quick enough. I was watching. You see the coach right there giving the signals, and he gave him with about nine seconds to go. Well, there's not enough time to, to call the play to the wide receivers. You know, they don't get too upset there on the sideline. You see one of the coaches there. I would assume that when you try to do it this way, you're going to draw a few delay of game penalties. They've drawn two this afternoon. Right now, K-State with a timeout. Hey, sign on with Channel 4 this season to help the Mercy Medical Center continue caring for Denver's needy. During the NFL regular season, your pledge for every quarterback sacked by the Broncos will go directly to Mercy. Pick up a pledge form at any Kings Supers, Gart Brothers, or Dave Cook and help sack them for Mercy's sake. Well, we mentioned all of the Buffs' offensive starters have been in the whole first half, despite the score. Same with the defensive unit. All the starters in there. First and ten for K-State from its own 38. A good rush. They set up the screen to Jackson. And he gets it up to the 45. The rush came from Leonard Renfro and Brian Diet. What a good job by Renfro of chasing that play down. You can see Jackson's got some room. That's Diet, Brian Diet. Brian Diet chasing Jackson down from behind. Diet, the young man from right here at Pomona High School in Colorado. They gained seven on that play, so it's second and three. Straw again to the tight end, this time broken up by Dion Figures. This is a pretty well-designed play, but nobody in the flat to hold Figures. Figures a corner, playing the flat. Nobody's out there, so he drops back into the secondary, and Carl Straw again is really paying for some of the throws that he makes. You want to play quarterback in the Big A Conference, you're going to get hit as Alfred Williams gets him from the right side. And Straw came up limping. Third and three for K-State. Boy, Straw is a wreck. Came in with a bruised right shoulder. Now he's limping. In a hurry. Three seconds left on the clock. Canavis McGee and Alfred Williams, the two bookend All-American linebackers, nail Straw. And the Wildcats will have to punt. Under the one minute mark in the half. Carl Straw's a pretty good quarterback, but he's much better when somebody blocks for him up front. And Williams and McGee just met about 10 yards behind the center, and Carl Straw was standing there waiting for him. Well, how would you like to see those two coming at you? Canavis McGee, a second team All American. Alfred Williams, first team All American. CU's all time leader in sacks. He's got 12 and a half sacks this year. Todd gets the kickoff. Rico Smith fields it at the 25. Spins away and down at the 27. A 41-yard punt. About Carl Straws, we were talking about. He really never has a chance to set on that right foot. When he does, right there, there's Canavis, and here comes Alfred. And gosh, they almost try to tear his head off. Straw was not very happy once he got up, and you can understand as to why. you got to give him a chance to throw the ball, and that time, no opportunity at all. Alfred Williams, last year's Big 8 Defensive Player of the Year, and Dave, I would imagine he's the leading candidate for that this year. Yep, all-time sack leader coming into today at 35 and a half. He's got a couple today. Buffs on a reverse. This is Pritchard. It's worked so well all year, it's working well again. He could go all the way, Mike Pritchard. He does. Another touchdown for Pritchard, his second of the day. With six seconds to go in the half, the Buffs strike again. Two things make this work. Watch Darian Hagan as he's being drugged down, enough strength to get off the football, 
Simpson had him, the 315-pound nose guard. Now watch Mike Pritchard, how easily he strides and how he sets up the blockers. Good job of not blocking there by Sean Brown on the clip and Pritchard. Look at the strides of this kid. Folks, he's running away from folks. 70 yards on the play and CU over the 40-point mark in the first half. Boy, great awareness, too. He's in full stride and he's eyeing all segments of the field, sees where to go, how to follow his blocking. Pritchard is something else. Jim Harper, the extra point. This will be the Bucks' 40th point of the afternoon. And he's got it. And with six seconds to go in the first half, the Bucks go up 40 to 3. Mike Pritchard is just effortless the way he runs it. It doesn't look like he's going anywhere, and all of a sudden, he's leaving it. He's got great speed, and it's deceptive speed because, again, his upper body rarely moves, and he's picking up big chunks of yardage. He's a happy Buffs fan, and that's why. 40-3, to three, the Buffs. They'll win that Big 8 title outright. A scoring drive, 70 yards, and one play. More push-ups, fellas. You guys are going to be in uh, great shape by the time this uh, game's over. Mike Pritchard, 70 yards on the ground. Of course, he had 217 yards rushing against Tennessee in the opener. He can play tailback. He can play wing back, wide receiver. He could probably play defensive back if they needed him. Bill, Bill Snyder in the white sweater and the glasses, the head coach of Kansas State, wondering what the heck he has to do to get his team in the end zone and stop the buffs on the other side. Let's go down to the field to Mark McIntosh. Thanks, guys. You know, normally offensive coordinator Jerry DiNardo calls all the buff plays from up in the press box, but this play, that reverse to Pritchard, that was Bill McCartney's call down here on the sideline. I guess he wanted to get Pritchard the ball one more time before halftime, and boy, did number nine take advantage of it. Back upstairs. Not well, a bad call. No. Mac was the defensive coordinator for Bo Schembechler at Michigan. Now maybe he's got a future as an offensive coordinator. Harper with a squib kick. And for Kansas State, that's Don Hilliard returning it up across the 40. Two seconds to go in the half. Let's see if Kansas State tries to go deep with the Hail Mary or if they just put the knee down and call it a call it a half. <laughs> Awfully quiet here at Folsom Field and you can understand why. This game about in the bag for the bus. Straw will throw it. That's to Michael Smith. And he is just whammoed by Eric Hamilton. And that's the end of the first half. The Buffs with a 37-point lead. And now the fans come alive. They know they might not see those 24 seniors again for the rest of the year until the Orange Bowl down in Miami. A dejected Kansas State team running off the field. A program on the rebound, or thought they, or, or so they thought. Yet the Buffs are teaching them a lesson today. Bill McCartney walking into the locker room with one of his offensive assistants, Gary Barnett. And there's your halftime score. Darian Hagan ran in a couple of touchdowns this half, threw for another. Mike Pritchard scored a couple times. Just about everybody's had a hand in what's going on here this first half in a Buffs route. I guess when it's the last time you play in front of the home crowd, Dave, you want to let everybody get a few applause. Well, you want to go out with a bang, and they've, uh, they're have they off to a pretty good start in that respect. 40 points in the first half, and Colorado certainly... I think the best half of football they've played this year, and you take into consideration the opponent they're playing, but Bill McCartney's got to be thrilled. All right, we'll take a halftime break and come right back to you from Folsom Field. Where should we push it to this time? 
time. Not that place again. Let's take it to budget transmission. But how far is it? It says here there's a budget transmission just up ahead. Well, let's go. It's got to be better than that last place. We have a warranty good anywhere we go. Where to, Wilma? Yes. Driving with budget transmission, we're set for life. When it comes to buying a new car, who can afford to make the wrong choice? A word of advice, Honda. Honda's been number one in owner loyalty 13 straight years. On Car and Driver's 10 best list eight years in a row and Motor Trend's Import Car of the Year four times. And Honda's resale value? Think about it. Have you ever met anyone who owns a Honda and doesn't love it? Honda, it makes more sense than ever. Mile High, Frontier, Empire, Ralph Shomp, Classic, Metro, and Summit. When your car was new, it was born to run. Galloping around on regular unleaded gasoline was just fine. But with time, your car can have its ups and downs and begin to lumber along. And it's a fact. Around 15,000 miles, your car can start to lose acceleration. Because regular unleaded may not be enough. Now's the time to turn to silver. Higher octane Emco silver can bring back the power. And remember, when you drive, make every gallon count. Channel 4, your source for news 24 hours a day. There's your halftime score in the background, the Kansas State Band, and I'm sure the folks from Manhattan are hoping that the band plays better than the team did in the first half. The Buffs with a 37-point lead. Everything going right for CU. Yeah, offensively, just a great, great effort. 455 yards of total offense in the first half. Wow. 200 passing, 255 on the ground, and... To say the least, Colorado is at their best here this afternoon. Well, I think we ought to check that out and see if that's a record. I'll bet it's close if it's not. Right now, let's go down to the field. Mark McIntosh has a little feature for us. Mark? Thank you very much, guys. We talked in the first half about the three outstanding junior college players the Buffs picked up this year. Jim Harper, Sean Brown, and Rico Smith. They've done a wonderful job in helping the Buffs get off to this Big 8 title and heading off to the Orange Bowl New Year's night to play Notre Dame. Here's a closer look at the boys. For sure this year, see you hit the Juco jackpot. The Bobs are headed for a second consecutive Big 8 championship and the Orange Bowl. It's easy to pinpoint some of the major contributors. Eric the Enemy's record-breaking rushing performance certainly stands out, as does Alfred Williams' incredible dominance from his linebacking position. And while these two All-Americans grabbed the headlines, they've had a lot of help from the unsung heroes, like place kicker Jim Harper, wide receiver Rico Smith, and tight end Sean Brown, the Buffs' junior college connection. We all had time to mature a little bit in junior college, get some, get a chance to play our freshman and sophomore years where a lot of the guys sit out and don't get to play as much. So I think that helped us a lot. You throw out a couple of blocked field goal attempts, and Harper's having a great season as the Buffs' place kicker. The California native's 54-yard field goal against Illinois is CU's longest in five years. Smith is one of the Buffs' big play threats. Just ask the Oklahoma Sooners, who were burned for 85 yards and a touchdown at Folsom Field last month. And Brown's made several key catches from his tight end position, yet the 20-year-old's biggest contribution might have been defensively. He stripped the ball away from a Washington Husky player after an interception. Brown's heads-up play led to a CU field goal. You know, I'm satisfied with the way I've been playing lately and the way our team's been playing, and just honored to be able to step in and play. Some people had doubts whether Rico Smith could play after he dropped a touchdown pass against Stanford. It hit number 86 right between the numbers. A 21-year-old bounced back from that disappointment with help from his fellow Bucks. It wasn't what I told myself. It's what my team told me. It's just forget about us in the past. Uh, we got a victory out of it, and let's go on from there. The Bucks have indeed gone on from there. They're headed for Miami. For the team's junior college trio, the Orange Bowl's a long way from the desolate fields of Juco football, especially for Sean Brown, a young man who's finally found a home in the Bucks black and gold. I almost picked Colorado out of high school, but things didn't work out, and I didn't go here, and I kind of regretted it for two years. 
And I told myself if I got the opportunity to come again, that I wouldn't pass it up. And that's what I did. You heard Sean Brown talking about how he wanted to come here originally, but did not. The story behind that is his dad wanted him to go to Arizona State where he could play football and baseball. Sean Brown wanted to come here and just concentrate on football, but he originally signed with Arizona State, but was a Prop 48 casualty, went to junior college, and is now here with the Buffs. The Buffs are in the locker rooms right now, and for all you Buff fans out there, it'll be the last time they go into these locker rooms. They will start construction on the new team house, the Dow Ward Center, tomorrow morning. They're going to tear down the structure you see right behind me, and come next year, there'll be a new facility there for the Buffs. Back upstairs. All right, thanks, Mark. And that team house uh, being put together, Dave Logan came, came up with the final $1 million, the former CU alum. <laughs> so the team house will start getting built tomorrow. We're going to take a break, come back to you at Folsom Field. job is to get healthy. CompraCare's job is to make sure you stay that way. Join the CompraCare health plan and live well. What would you say if Pizza Hut served up fully loaded Supreme pizzas for the never before low price of just $6.99 each? Oh, baby, that's what I love. Like. It's the holiday feast deal. Get up to five Supreme pizzas each for just $6.99. Oh, the Supreme Pizza with six of your favorite toppings at a price you're really going to like. So this holiday season, hurry into Pizza Hut for the deal that's got everyone saying. Oh, baby, that's what I like. Pizza Hut, make it great. It's something all of us do together. We, we always have. And we started at Christie's Sports. You can't expect highly functional ski wear from Columbia. Jackets and shells with zip-out liners, the interchange system, and this year in colors that are fun and bold. Capri will really excite you with the Extreme Mogul. High energy action with smooth turn initiation and release. It's extreme. Extreme fun taken to the limit. Pre in Columbia at Christie's Fords. They're all over Colorado. One of the best handling American luxury cars we've driven. Hands down winner over Lincoln Continental. One of the quietest, smoothest luxury sedans, right up there with Lexus LS400. Introducing the new Buick Park Avenue, starting under $25,000. For the best selection, see your five Metro Denver Buick dealers, courtesy Dean, Duncan, Goodman, or Massey Buick. Back at Folsom Field, we just got word the Kodak All-American team was named today. And the Buffs landed three players on that team. Eric Bieniemy leading the nation in rushing. Along with Joe Garten, the senior on the offensive line, and the fine linebacker, Alfred Williams. Garten and Williams are repeaters on that Kodak All-American team. Well, you still think college athletes lead a life of special privilege and special treatment? A life free of worry? Well, a team of sociologists say you are dead wrong. Patty and Peter Adler spent 10 years studying one of the nation's top college basketball teams, and they've written a book based on their experiences. CU's Michelle Kahn takes us to the pages of backboards to blackboards for a look at the pressures and pitfalls of being a college athlete. Coleman, Coleman puts it down once and comes through, scored a field goal. They come to college very idealistic. They have high hopes and aspirations for what their lives are going to be like. They thought it was going to be big social life, they would be big men on campus like they had been in high school, they would be, you know, kind of animal house, big fraternity life, social scene. But these dreams are shattered because they're isolated, they're not doing well in their classes. It's not hard to understand why, when they're not dribbling a basketball down court, they're in team meetings or at practice, traveling to and from games, or doing media interviews. It's very difficult for them to concentrate on their schoolwork when they've got all these other things going on. Tough on the social life, too. Many times college athletes live in an athletic dorm on another side of campus, far away from the rest of the students. They eat separately. They have practice at a time, which makes them not be able to go out to lunch with other students or be able to recreate and relax in the afternoon. And they don't really get to meet students 
from the rest of the campus or have anywhere near the same kind of social life. It all adds up to frustration, a frustration Patty and Peter Adler came to know as they traveled with a top 20 college basketball team, 10 years on the bench, on the road, and in the hearts of 39 young men, all living the same pressures, all dreaming the same dream. Most players come in with a dream that they're going to make it in the NBA. Through the college experience, they keep that dream because of their interactions with each other. But at the end of it, they find that very few of them actually make it in the professional ranks. In fact, Adler says only 2% of all college athletes end up living their dream. And for those that do, it's often short lives. The average pro sports career lasts less than four years. So for many promising players, life after eligibility becomes a nightmare. One of the saddest things is to see them right after they get out of school because they've been so enmeshed in this life and this role and then they're lost. The thing they've been focusing their lives on for all these years is suddenly pulled out from underneath them and they have nothing to replace it with. And so many athletes leave the court and the college campus with only remnants of their dreams, good memories, and important lessons learned. In Boulder, I'm Michelle Kahn reporting. All right, we'll take another break at Folsom Field. We'll be right back with you. U.S. West Communications has a question for every small business. When you have a customer on the line, who's to say you aren't missing a bigger one? Call us about adding another business phone line. U.S. West, making the most of your time. Back when I was a boy, Mom made a country fried steak that was so good we couldn't wait to sit down to supper. I always thought we should have one just like it at Wendy's. Introducing Wendy's 99 cent country fried steak. 100% beef, lightly breaded and cooked golden brown. It's new on the 99 cent super value menu. You can take the boy out of the country, but he still has to eat. Try the new 99 cent country fried steak only on Wendy's super value menu. This commercial does not contain any basketball stars, movie stars, rock stars, or baseball stars. In fact, the only stars in this commercial are these shoes. At Lexus, we didn't just suppress the engine noise. We suppressed the gear noise. The exhaust noise. The wind noise. And all that was left was the perfect environment for you to create a little noise of your own. The new Lexus LS400 luxury sedan. Lexus, the result of our relentless pursuit of perfection. Larry, what could be better than watching the News 4 Parade of Lights Saturday morning? We're watching it Saturday night. For the first time ever, the News 4 Parade of Lights is going to be televised at night. If you can't be here, watch Saturday, December 1st at 7 p.m. right here on Channel 4. It's halftime in Boulder. The CU Buffs leading 40-3. to The Buffs scored every possession but one in that first half. And the only reason they didn't score then was because they had a field goal attempt by Jim Harper blocked and it was a 55 yard attempt at that let's take a look at some first half highlights well they had 455 yards of total offense and so when you've got that many yards you're doing a lot of things the right way here darian hagan the first touchdown of the game goes back and can't find anybody open and mr magic is off to the races nobody around him and the buffs scored on their first possession of the game with this run and at a seven nothing lead darian hagan has been sensational here in the first half both throwing and running the football a lot of quarterbacks on the field today, at least a couple for the Buffs and one for Kansas State. And here Charles Johnson, after Darian Hagan poked in the eye, gets in the act. Gets a nice block there by Michael Simmons. And C.J. dances into the end zone with his only carry of the day. And, of course, the big play man for Colorado this year, or one of them, Mike Pritchard, with six seconds to go in the first half. Pritchard on the pitch from Hagan, the reverse, and 70 yards later, after a nice cut, Look at the guys downfield. Mark Vanderpool, 300 pounds, trying to run down the field. Michael Simmons escorts Michael Pritchard into the end zone, and Colorado scored the final touchdown of the half. You can see 
CU dominating 19 first downs in the first half, 456 yards in total offense. That has got to be a record. No, it isn't. It's close to a record. I'm looking it up right now. They once had 512 yards and a half. That came against Oklahoma State. The game was played here at home in Boulder, and it came in 1971. And by, by the way, that was when Charles Davis set the uh, Colorado rushing mark with 341 yards on the ground. All right, we'll return to Folsom Field for more halftime activities after this message from the University of Colorado. Ready, everybody? Light up! It's a collective good. Why is it a collective good? Somebody raise your hand. Welcome to the University of Colorado. One light beer with big draft taste. Cold filter, genuine draft light. Yeah, we're gonna need some help up here, over. Nissan would like to remind you that the Pathfinder SEV6 four-door was judged 4x4 four four of the year by four-wheel and off-road magazine. Don't get stuck with anything else. Mr. Morrison has just left his lights on. Mrs. Morrison is pregnant, very pregnant. So the Morrisons could be in trouble. David, it's time. Big trouble. Luckily, the Morrisons got a new champion switch battery from Walmart for just $59.96. The hood. If it ever goes dead, just switch to the reserve and start your car. Switch back to recharge the main battery. The champion switch battery from Walmart. Always the low price on the brands you trust. Always. The News 4 Parade of Lights has a new addition to a great Colorado tradition. Watch the parade across from Denver City County Building. Get tickets today from the 16th Street Mall Ticket Bus. Today's game is being brought to you by Grease Monkey and by Samsonite, both proud companies for Colorado. And also by Taco Bell, by U.S. West, and by Miller Genuine Draft Light. Well, Ralphie just came charging out, and we're going down to the field to Mark McIntosh. Mark? Thank you, Les, here with Coach McCartney. A darn good first half of football. Well, we had a lot of big plays in the first half, and um, we got big play guys, and... I'm surprised it opened up as quickly as it did. I thought it might open up, but not that soon. Are we talking Aaron McCartney here? Hagan had like 175 yards passing first half. Well, he's probably not going to get to throw much in the second half, so uh, we needed to work on it, and he did a good job. How much will we see the starters in the second half? Um, what we'd like to do here is the first time that when we kick off, we'll have our first defense, and we'd like to get the ball back, and then we'd like to give the enemy a chance to get a few yards and then get those guys out of there and let everybody else play. All right, good luck second half. Okay. Coach Bill McCartney kind of plotting out his strategy for the second half. Look for the enemy to carry the ball a lot early and then them starters probably get the heck out of there. Back upstairs. All right. Thanks, Mark. Well, Dave, it sounds like Bill McCartney wants to let those starters on the field and then bring them off to an ovation. Yeah, and the enemy had 93 yards at halftime. You certainly want him to go over the 100-yard mark which uh, he has failed to do only one time this year. Eric Bieniemy, looking for the national rushing title. The man closest to him is Darren Lewis of Texas A&M, and I believe, I believe Lewis and A&M have two more games left to add to that rushing total. Well, to start off the second half, CU will kick it off to Kansas State. A couple of big eight scores for you. Oklahoma State leading Iowa State 19 to 10. That's in the third quarter of Missouri. 24 Kansas 7 also in quarter number three. Nebraska and Oklahoma taking the day off. They will butt heads later this week 
in their regular season finale. Jim Harper has the kicking chore for CU. Back to receive for K-State. It'll be Rawlings and Coleman, as it has been all afternoon. Once again, the Buffs with a 40-3 lead as we start the second half. Most of the fans are sticking around. I would assume they still have some oranges in their pouch that they want to throw. Second half, some of the CU's second and third stringers should get a chance at some work. And it won't be foreign to them. They had a shot at working up a sweat last week. The Buffs easily handling Oklahoma State 41 to 22. Buffs haven't had as many blowouts as last year. Not scoring as many points, but what counts is the record. And with a win today, the Buffs will go to 10-1. Coleman up across the 20, down at the 25, and a flag on the field. Andre Coleman, a freshman. And the way he reacted, looks like the penalty will be against Kansas State. Rich Fisher will be called for clipping. Clip. On the return, on the receiving team, at the distance to the goal, first down and 10. All right, go, Buffs, get up, come on. We're going to be filled or dawn this time. So Kansas State will start on offense at their own 12-yard line. Carl Straw, as you see, still in the ballgame for K-State, despite a bruised right shoulder and a mauling from the Buffs in the first half. Pat Jackson tries to turn the corner. Dragged down by Beekert. Well, you don't hear a lot about Beekert, mainly because he's on the same linebacking unit with two All-Americans, Alfred Williams and Canavis McGee, but Beekert leads the nation in tackles. He is averaging 13 tackles a game. He has 145 tackles on the year coming into today. And he has a lot more playing time to come at CU. He is only a sophomore. Second and nine for Kansas State. K-State with three receivers lined up wide left. Straw pitches right, however. Jackson run out of bounds. He gets nowhere. Mark McIntosh has a tidbit for us. Mark? Thanks, Les. You were talking about Carl Straw earlier. He's got that sore right shoulder, but... I just happened to catch the Bill Schneider snow, snow show about two weeks ago, and he was talking about Carl Straw was the toughest quarterback he has ever coached. So it's not surprising that Carl Straw, the last half of his senior year, injuries aren't going to slow that guy down. He's going to finish out his career and try to rack up a few more stats. Back up soon. He is a senior. This will be his last game in a Kansas State uniform. I would imagine he'd get a look by some NFL teams, not necessarily as a draft pick, but certainly as a free agent. He does have a very strong arm and a relatively accurate arm. That was Joel Steed. Joel Steed knocked that pass attempt into the air, and Alfred Williams almost caught that ball. Canavis Al McGee actually had, uh, had a better chance for it, and Talk about Carl Straw and how tough he is. He also backpedals pretty well because as he's going back, he's got a man right in his face, Joel Steed. The ball knocked in the air. And Canavis almost gets the interception. Watch how quickly Joel Steed, he never touched. The ball knocked in the air. Canavis almost comes up with a diving interception in the end zone. Kansas State back to punt Cobb from his own end zone. And Dave McLuhan will field the nice high kick. McLuhan calling for a fair catch. Makes a nice catch. 
the Bobs will start with it at their own 47. You might have just heard a cheer come up from the crowd about 30 seconds ago, and that is because Bill McCartney did what he said he would do. He brought the starting defensive unit off the field. Probably the last time those seniors, at least, will play in front of the home crowd. And maybe the last time we'll see Eric the enemy, George Hemingway, Mike Pritchard, and crew, as Bill McCartney said, he'll give this team at least one more chance early in the third quarter to get the enemy some yards. The first team offense still in the ballgame. Hagan gives to the enemy. And Eric gets it down to the 48-yard line of K-State. Call it a gain of four before Enan Oku brings him down. We said earlier Jay Lewenberg was out with a uh, sprained ankle. He is taped up and back in the lineup. Of course, offensive linemen are just tough natured guys usually. They're down in the trenches, and uh, it takes a lot to keep those guys out of the lineup. Eric Bienemy, close to a milestone, 4,000 yards in his career here at CU. He needs 79 yards to do it. He gets a few more right there inside the 45 yard line, down to the 42. It's nice of Coach McCartney to get Eric Bieniemy as many yards as possible, but the one thing you have to worry about is an injury to Eric. With the Orange Bowl still to come, Eric does have some padding on his back for those bruised ribs, but he seems to be doing okay. There's a good look at Eric on third and one. Michael Simmons in motion. Eric will do it. Picks up the first down and more. Cuts back inside the 30-yard line. William Price wrestles him down. A little scuffle on the field. Joe Garton sticking up for his little running back, the enemy. Well, again, the three plays here in the third quarter have all been the ISO lead and the enemy into the, into the uh, secondary. Good block by Brown and Simmons. Price kind of body slams the enemy here. And Eric didn't much like that got up and uh, exchanged a few shoves and we'll line up and start again at first down. First and ten from the 30. Hagan still at quarterback. And the enemy on the draw. Down to the 26. Gain of four. You know, it wouldn't surprise me, as Bill McCartney said, we want to get Eric a few more yards if he carries every down on this drive. So far, that's his fourth consecutive carry. And Kansas State's blitzing just about on every play, so they've got the opportunity to really blow up that ISO lead. It takes a while to develop. Well, running the ball also serves another purpose for CU. I would believe Bill McCartney has a lot of respect for Bill Snyder on the other sideline, and this is a good way of allowing the clock to tick down before this turns into any more of an embarrassment. CU leading 40 to 3. 11.45 to go in the third quarter. That time the blitz worked, and the enemy is piled up back at the 32, a loss of six. Enan Oka makes the tackle. Enan Oka's made a couple of tackles behind the line of scrimmage, and uh, you mentioned the Wildcats. They are coming on every play here in the third quarter. Tough to run that ISO because you just have too many bodies to account for, not enough guys to block. Third and 11 for K-State. for John Bowman is tight end. Hagan had a lot of pressure on him. Number 89, Elijah Alexander. Very quick young man, their right defensive end. Well, we haven't seen a lot of Bowman the second half of the season. He's been fighting a foot sprain. Lost his starting job to Sean Brown in the process. Bowman from Las Vegas, six foot three, 245 pound junior. <laughs> And Bluto is in the game now, attempting a field goal for CU. With the bare foot, it's up, and he's got it. From 47 yards out, Pat Bluto with the field goal. And the Buffs go up 43 to three. On Wall Street, fortunes are won and lost and won again before 10.30. Amid the halls of ivy, the best ideas often come and go before 10.30. And on the back lots of Hollywood, love often blooms and fades before 10.30.
which is why Federal Express delivers before 10.30 at more places around the country than anyone else. Federal Express, absolutely, positively the best in the business. In 1982, I bought a Toyota 4x4, and eight years later, I got over $3,100 back for it. That means I own that truck for about $100 a month. The cost of owning a new Toyota 4Runner or Previa has dropped even more, thanks to the great deals your Toyota dealer's making right now. Just in time for winter, save plenty on a rugged new 4Runner or spacious Previa van, both available with four-wheel drive. Deals this good mean the cars that cost less to own now cost even less to buy. Drop by your Toyota dealer now, while the cost of owning a new Toyota is dropping. Channel 4 invites you to join the good times at Walt Disney's World on Ice. Mickey and Minnie will be there with Donald and Daisy, the Rescue Rangers, and a magical flight with Peter Pan, December 4th through 9th at McNichol Sports Arena. Join that fun with Channel 4 on opening night, Tuesday, December 4th at 7.30 p.m. when all tickets are $3 off. Channel 4 Rocky Mountain News opening night discount tickets are on sale at the box office and all Ticketmaster outlets. Walt Disney's World on Ice. It's where the fun is. Les Shapiro and Dave Logan back at Folsom Field. Buffs just kicked the field goal. It was Pat Bluto in the ball game now. Sophomore from Anaheim, California. He's going to give Jim Harper the rest of the afternoon off. Bluto battled it out in training camp with Harper for the place kicking job. Bluto with that bare foot goes two yards deep to Andre Coleman. Goes up the middle to the 18-yard line. A return of about 20 yards for Coleman. We've seen a lot of this today. Scoring drives by Colorado. Six plays, 22 yards, less than three minutes. And Pat Bluto with the 48-yard field. But kind of nice to see because he really hasn't had much of a chance to kick in games this year. But he came on and hit a long field goal. A lot of reserves in the ball game for CU now on defense. Kansas State still has its starting offensive unit. Straw, nice touch pass to the tight end Campbell. Up to the 39-yard line, and he is just whacked by Tate Nelson. Yeah, Tate, I think, took the worst of that. Campbell, maybe not, has injured his left arm. Big tight end has been active here this afternoon, and he has been very tough to bring down. The crossing route, play action fake, and Straw gets him. Campbell will come from the left side of the screen. He gets enough depth to get behind the linebacker. Nice touch pass. And Tate Nelson will come from the top of the screen. And helmet to helmet, they strike. He actually knocked Nelson back a couple of yards, but Campbell was yet to get up. That's his fourth catch of the day. I'm impressed by Campbell. A huge young man. Six foot five, 245 pounds. Last catch was for 21 yards. You know, he doesn't have great speed, but he has the knack for finding the open seam. And Straw's getting in the wall. He also has a knack for running over the field. that big, I guess it's easier. Maybe just a stinger on the shoulder. Good look at the senior, Joe Garten, the All-American offensive lineman for the Buffs. He realized he hasn't, he, he's given up just one sack all year. And he's only been penalized once all year. That's amazing. First and 10 for K-State from its own 39. Straw with a wild pitch intended for Jackson. He picks up the fumble and runs it out of bounds at the 33. Loss of about six. Well, there have been some fortuitous bounces here this afternoon. That time Straw with the errant pitch and Jackson gets the one hopper and is able to regain control and get out of bounds. This is when you know as you're the pitch guy, it's a terrible feeling to see this. Your quarterback pitched the ball about six yards behind you and you know there are a lot of folks in black jerseys that are hurrying to greet you. Jackson does a nice job just getting out of bounds. Looks like a jump ball thrown up for the fullback and for the halfback. Second and 15 and they're on 34. The Grabbed by number 91 Lamar Gray in the ball game now. At linebacker for the Buffs, and that will be a sack. I think they called an incomplete pass. That, that's the big difference between college football and pro football. There is no in the grasp, and what a good job by Lamar Gray, not only getting to the quarterback, but watching the left side of the screen. He keeps Straw inside. Watch 91 fight upfield, 
past a couple of blockers. Jackson tries to get him. He's still outside rush contained. He forces Straw to stop and then gets to him right there. That would be in the grasp in the National Football League, but in college football, no such rule. Well, I think it should have been there also, and I thought I saw the back judge throw his arm up and thought I heard him blow the whistle. I stand corrected. It'll be third and 15 still for K-State. Intercepted. Intercepted by David Gibbs. Knocked out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Boy, Gibbs has not gotten a lot of playing time, but he certainly has made that little time worthwhile. Now, Gibbs a senior and a nice way to end his career here with an interception. Did a good job of funneling that receiver to the outside. If you don't do that on this particular play, it could be a big gainer, but Gibbs got the jam, ran with the receiver, and actually was the only player close to the ball thrown by Carl Straw. David Gibbs, a senior out of Alabama. He had an interception last week against Oklahoma State. He also spoiled a fake punt by Oklahoma State last week, and he had that big stoppage of the Nebraska fake punt that turned the game around for the Buffs a couple weeks ago up in Lincoln. First and 10 for the Buffs. Chucky Snowden in the ball game at halfback now. Down to the 31-yard line. Gain of four yards there. been pretty active today for Kansas State and they, they've taken a lot of chances they've had to do that much the same as Oklahoma State tried to do last week if you don't do that see who runs the ball down your throat if you do do that you make some big plays but you also really run the risk of giving up some big plays before you're done and they have third and five Johnson back to pass he is brought down quickly by Enan Oka been very active here in the second half. Well, this thing looked like a jailbreak. Charles Johnson, he's back to three steps. Look at this. Yikes. Everybody coming. Simpson doing a good job holding up in the middle. Kansas State wins that battle. CJ never got a chance to set. Tom Ruin in the ball game to punt for the Buffs. Eight and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. And Michael Smith will receive the punt for K-State. Ruin gets a little too much. That ball bounds into the end zone. So K-State will have it at its own 20-yard line. As the Buffs bring in the second and third team, we'll try and name the players for you, but right now we'll take a break. Come winter, you see most sports cars at their worst, if you see them at all. Unless your sports car is an all-wheel drive Eagle Talon TSI, with 195 horses to keep you dashing through the snow. To go anywhere, anytime Talon TSI. Reasons to own one keep piling up. Now, save on a special allotment of Talons at your Jeep and Eagle dealer. See your local Jeep Eagle dealer. Samsonite's Adventure Series luggage is perfect for those active vacations. It's sporty, easy to carry, and like every Samsonite, quite durable. The Adventure Series, for all you can pack into a vacation. Silver can bring back the power. 
And remember, when you drive, make every gallon count. Darian Hagen out of his shoulder pads. No helmet. He's done for the afternoon, and a pretty good afternoon it was. Ran for two touchdowns, threw for another. Right now, Kansas State with the ball, first and 10 from its own 20. And the new quarterback is number 19, Jason Smargesso. He's a redshirt freshman out of Pennsylvania. Six foot two, 195 pounds. Tried to run with the ball there, no gain. Into the ball game for CU on defense. Paul Rose at linebacker now, just made the tackle. Ronnie Bradford in at one cornerback, take Nelson in at safety. David Gibbs in the ball game. He had an interception the last Kansas State series. Second and 10 for K-State. The one running back for them is Rod Schiller. Well, just so runs it again. This time does a little better, about seven yards. Well, I'd love to tell you we've seen this kid play, really could give you a rundown, but uh, we haven't. Looks like he really wants to run the ball before he throws the ball, or would rather run it. Got pretty good speed, quickness. Not a whole lot to say statistically. He hasn't completed a pass all year. He's run the ball just six times and gone for minus three yards. And no wonder we haven't seen him. <laughs> you don't see him on many Kansas State highlight reels right now. Third and three for the Wildcats. Just so runs it. This time he gets the first down and a lot more up across the 40 yard line. Gain of 13. Tate Nelson made the tackle. Spar Gesso on the quarterback draw doing a pretty good job. We'll have to wait and see how he throws the ball, but so far he runs it pretty good. Rich Fisher in the line for the, uh, excuse me, the lineup for CU and linebacker now. First and ten. Smart Gesso, nice touch on the pass and it's complete. To Andre Coleman, inside the Buffs 45-yard line at about the 47. I think they're going to say no catch as the side judge overruled the line judge. I don't know how either one of them could have seen it. Just a throw that takes the receiver to the sideline and tough to see as to whether he caught the ball or not. One official calls it complete, another one doesn't. Andre Coleman, well, the guy who, who thinks it's not a completion has to absolutely be certain. Tough to see from there. He certainly was inbounds. The line judge called it a catch. The side judge on the left side of the screen said no, but he was well behind the play. Snyder a little upset, but then he's been upset all afternoon. The Buffs lead at 43 to 3. We have 6.22 to go in the third quarter. Kansas State with three receivers lined up wide right. Smargesso's going to run it again, though. For a gain of one. Paul Rose there to make the tackle again. Dwayne Davis in the ballgame at safety for the Buffs. Lamar Gray at linebacker. Fisher at linebacker. Looks like Chad Brown is in the game now. Coming back from mononucleosis, got to get him some playing time. He's normally a starter, but just want to get him out there and get him back into action. Even after missing the last couple of games with Mono, Chad Brown is still the second leading tackler on the bus team behind Beaker. Margesso throws into a crowd. Three different players touch that pass, but none of them comes up with the catch. And K-State will have to punt. I think easy to see on this play, Margesso wants to run. You can see him back there really trying to scramble before he lets the play develop. Breaks contain and gets to the outside. Watch how many players have a chance on this thing. One, two, three, four. Got a lot of hands on that one. Nobody can catch it. Kansas State is a very young team, and when you're young, you're usually able to rebound from games like this. The Wildcats brought 21 freshmen with them this weekend, Boulder. That's quite a few. Cobbs punts it. McLuhan. 
from his own eight yard line. And up across the 20 before he skips out of bounds with a couple of penalty flags down. A 51 yard punt by Cobb. Notre Dame, excuse me, I'm sorry. Go right ahead. Notre Dame leading Penn State 14 nothing first quarter. Mississippi 7 to 3 over Tennessee. That game to decide the Sugar Bowl representative from the Southeastern Conference. Well, you heard Bill McCartney this week saying he hopes Notre Dame goes undefeated in its final two games. That way, Notre Dame will be number one going into the Orange Bowl New Year's Day against the number two ranked CU Buffs. And so far, Notre Dame is holding up its end of the bargain, beating Penn State in South Bend, Indiana. Next week's going to be a little tougher for them, I think, Dave. They go to USC to play Clip the Trojans. On the return, half the distance, first down. And UCLA leading USC right now, 7-6 in the first. Penalty was against the Buffs. They'll start with it, first and 10 from their own 11-yard line. Charles Johnson in at quarterback, spelling Darian Hagan, who's finished for the afternoon. James Hill and David Arterberry at running back. Arterberry gets the pitch, but not much yardage. One yard. And another flag on the field. Arterberry, a six foot two, 200 pound sophomore from here in Colorado, Mullen High School. Barterberry is not your conventional tailback in the option game. Dead ball, personal foul. You can foul see there a late hit. On the defense, 15 yards, first down. But David Arterberry, very strong. He breaks a lot of tackles. He, he's probably at his best when you line him up in the eye and you're running between the tackles. He's got good strength and good ability to break those tackles. We touched on this a bit last week, Dave, but losing the enemy is certainly a blow to this program. But got some pretty good young running backs in the ball game in this program Snowden and, Arterberry and you've got a good old running back in the game now O.C. Oliver who set the freshman running mark in his freshman campaign for most yards rushing had a tough time injury wise David Brown with a nice pass from Charles Johnson but Brown can't hold on to it well, Brown's a former linebacker that's uh, that thing was thrown pretty hard and tough to catch. Although he had a big reception in the Nebraska game, he actually recovered a fumble by Sean Brown at the Nebraska one after Brown had made the catch, which enabled CU to retain possession and eventually score. A lot of oranges being thrown out of the field. Now. Second and ten for the Buffs from their own 26. Sardaberry again. Nice dance routine up across the 35-yard line. All right, he's got some good moves inside. Yeah, that's what I mean about Arterbury. You line him up in the eye at 200-plus pounds. He's going to break a lot of tackles. And you run him, and you're going to gain some yards. Good job up front. You can see Kansas State blitzing. The offensive line picks it up. Good cutback. Arterbury was a great back at Mullen High School. I think he can be a pretty good back in college, too, once he gets the opportunity. Lindsay in the ball game now at wing back for the Buffs. A freshman redshirt. This is Arterberry again up to the 40 yard line. Call it a gain of four and another first down for the Buffs. 4.06 to go in the third quarter. Three to three. The Big Eight title is theirs. The trip to the Orange Bowl is theirs. And after the game, the person from the Orange Bowl committee will extend them the official invitation. This is a pass complete to Mark Henry, the junior out of Fleming, Colorado. I tell you, Roderick Green, the cornerbacks, had a tough, tough day. Mark Henry on a nice pass from Charles Johnson. Decides, well, I'm going to run inside, 
No, nah, I'm going to run outside. Ah, oh, heck, I'm just going to try to run over you. <laughs> and Henry takes Roger Green for quite a ride. About an additional seven or eight yards. First and ten for the Buffs in Kansas State Territory at the 45. O.C. Oliver with a carry and a cheer from the crowd. Well, O.C. Oliver had a great freshman year. Didn't get a lot of work at running back since then. Right. Crowd just with a great cheer that went O.C. Oliver. Now they remember him. He had a bunch of injuries, really tore up a knee in a spring, actually the last football game in spring practice. Moved to defensive back, moved to wing back, he's back at tailback, and O.C. Oliver, a terrific player out of Houston, Texas. Of course, nobody will forget that touchdown pass in the Nebraska game when CU beat the Cornhuskers 20 to 10. Oliver to Lance Carl. Second and nine. C.J. keeps it. Still on his feet. Down to the 31. And a yellow flag on the field. Well, O.C. Oliver had that great freshman year. Set the record for a freshman running back. Yards rushing in a season. It's been a tough go. Holding Since his on the offense, year. 10 yards from the line of scrimmage. But to his credit, he's hung with the second program, round. hung with the sport. Tough kid. That play is going to be called back. The only thing really that stopped Colorado this afternoon have been penalties. And they haven't had many. See you with six penalties so far. Second and 18 for the Buffs. Around 46 yard line. James Hill and Arter Berry, the running backs. CJ with some heat. Can't get away. About three purple and white jerseys bring him down for the sack back at the 41. Maybe a loss of five. That's the kind of play that if he breaks contain there, it's going to be huge. They blitzed eight guys as one of the buffs down and being attended to. I think that's uh, Greg Most, I believe. You're right. That man from Broomfield, Colorado, freshman red shirt. Slated for uh, a lot of playing time next year. Hard to tell what's the matter right now. Maybe when he gets up, we'll get a better indication. Looks like the right leg. Looks like the knee. And as Lost is taken off the field, we'll take a break at Folsom Field. I'd really never considered buying an imported car. Then one day I realized everyone in my whole family was driving Hondas. It was like, whoa, what's going on here? The next time my car was in the shop again, my sister let me borrow her Accord. I was tempted not to give it back. I mean, when you look at the reliability, the value, the security of a Honda, why take a chance on anything less? Honda, it makes more sense than ever. Summit, Mile High, Frontier, Empire, Ralph Shop, Classic, and Metro. Yeah, the meeting with Nakamura went great. The way he was talking, it sounds like a done deal if we can deliver the plans by the 30th. Oh, we've got to give him a yes or no answer before he leaves town. Look, I got to go. He said he'd call from the airport. It's in the bag. Don't miss those important calls. Call U.S. West for an extra line just for your special customers. U.S. West, making the most of your time. My name is Ona Fowler. I was born in the year 1906. I live here alone, and this is where I hope to stay. It's my home. Thank you very much. Well, Eric Bieniemy joins his quarterback and friend Darian Hagen on the sideline. Both are out of pads, finished for the afternoon. Bieniemy with another fine day, 22 rushes, 
for 115 yards. And on the year, Eric Bieniemy has 1,668 yards. See you with third and a long 23 yards to go. Less than two minutes to go in the third quarter. Charles Johnson going deep, nowhere near a receiver, except for a Kansas State defensive back who intercepts it. That's Mendez. Finally tripped up at the 27. Jamie Mendez, a freshman for K-State, intercepts the Charles Johnson pass. Well, Mendez has had a tough time here this afternoon, but uh, does not get fooled from his free safety spot this time as he did against Pritchard. You see Mendez circling back, actually ahead of Charles Johnson, the intended receiver. C.J. pays for chasing him right here. Bang. As Needham gets to him, and Kansas State takes over on the 27-yard line. Nice gesture by the Buffs starting quarterback, Darian Hagan, just came out onto the field to console Charles Johnson, tell him not to worry about it. Buffs lead it 43-3. Kansas State with the ball. Freshman quarterback in, Jason Smargesso. Pat Jackson runs it up across the 35. Game of seven or eight. Lamar Gray makes the tackle. talked about the weather Colorado's had to play in. Boy, here in Boulder, spectacular days this fall. Buffs have had great weather all week, whether at home or on the road. Worst week was probably when they went up to Nebraska in the middle of that cold rainstorm. Had a little rain at Kansas, but here in Boulder, it's been gorgeous every game. Bay State runs the ball for about a yard. Less than a minute to go in the quarter. You see Greg Lost being attended to. Unfortunately, Russ Heasley spun into Lost, and Lost got that right leg caught underneath him, couldn't pick it up. Underneath his own teammate. Well, it's always a shame to see somebody injured. It's especially a shame when you consider Lost just came into the ball game. He doesn't get a lot of work. There he is getting injured on. Two plays he's been able to win. Smargesso on the quarterback draw. He likes this play, doesn't he? Gets it up to the 50. Gain of about 13. Take Nelson there along with Dwayne Davis to stop him. Good look at Smargesso. Replacing Carl Strong in the lineup. And there's a look at a dejected Bill Snyder. Hey, fin finishing five and six really is to be applauded. That's not bad for Kansas State. It certainly is. This team is on the rebound, and it's because of Coach Snyder. Smargesso runs it again. This time hit from behind, but not before he gains six yards. And we're going to take a break. Here in Boulder, the Buffs still lead it 43 to 3 at the end of the third quarter. The airline that brings you 10 countries across Asia and the Pacific now bridges the Atlantic to Europe. The flights to Frankfurt and to Paris. Come fly the airline that spans more than half the world. United. Come fly the friendly skies. This year's winner of our lowest prices of the year sale award is, well, it's unanimous again. The winner is McDuff Electronics and Appliances. Don't worry. No speech. Just incredible bargains during our lowest prices of the year sale. Right now, save on this Frigidaire 18 cubic foot frost free refrigerator just $397.87. And make no payments till April on any purchase over $100. So come in and save during our lowest prices of the year sale. And remember, nobody undersells the dump. Sunday on News 4, Bob Palmer brings you a telling tale of human nature, of characters who helped shape the early West. Watch Bob's Colorado at 5 and 10 Sunday on News 4. Watch the Lotto Drawing tonight at 10 here on Channel 4. Today's game is being brought to you by Grease Monkey and by Samsonite, both proud companies for Colorado.
and also by Taco Bell, by U.S. West, and by Miller Genuine Draft Light. Well, we just got some news from the CU sideline, and Mark McIntosh has it. Mac? Yeah, Les, this is from the Ripley's Believe It or Not, but I just got word from the CU bench that Alfred Williams and Canavis McGee, the next time the Buffs get the football, are going to go in as receivers. We don't know whether that's going to be tight end or wide receiver, and I tell you, there might be some truth to it because I saw Canavis come over and spray a bunch of stickum on his hands, so maybe he's hoping he can latch onto one. Back up to you guys. Is that legal? I tell you what he better do, you better get rid of those big pads and all the leg pads. You've got to play receiver. You've got to be nifty, and you can't be all bulked up. And get him a new face mask and a new helmet. Get him some sweatbands and spatty shoes. I mean, if you're going to do it, do it right. And don't get him hurt, or somebody's going to hang Bill McCartney. K-State with the ball at the CU 45-yard line. Second and five. This is Jackson. Down to the 42. Call it a gain of three. Take a look at the uh, third quarter stats, and it's been all CU. Colorado had 456 in total yards at halftime, so not much action in the third quarter. Kansas State just trying to survive, and got a decent job offensively when you, you think about where they've come and where they are now. They came in with a scoring average of 25 points a game, but then again, they haven't gone against the CU Buffs yet. Third and two. Close to that first down. Might be a little short. What do you think, Dave? Last, I think he's about five inches short. <laughs> well, you were pretty close on your last guess. And that's without binoculars, folks. I think he's going to be about two feet short. It will be fourth and a short one yard. K-State's going to go for it. Why not? Well, the way Smart Justin's been running around, maybe you just call a quarterback sneak. Well, we told you about Canavis McGee and Alfred Williams coming back into the game to play offense. Joe Garten, an offensive lineman, we're told, might come into the game to play a little fullback. Now, he doesn't have to change anything. He, he looks <laughs> just like a fullback. And look, the other guys, they've got to readjust their wardrobe a bit. He doesn't have to change his mentality either. He's got he a fullback's mentality. Big pads and the thick legs and the face mask all banged up and blood on his elbow. I mean, he looks like a fullback. Well, Kansas State calls a timeout, so we'll take one, too. Be right back. This is it. There's only one light beer with big draft taste. Cold filter, genuine draft light. Yeah, we're gonna need some help up here, over. Local Grease Monkey for a care pack today. Donnie, come on, come, come on. on. You know, a lot of people saw our last Chevy commercial and they said, who are those guys? And quite frankly, that hurts. Hey, does anyone ask who that guy jumping up and down in the Toyota commercial is? No. And he charges an arm and a leg for his cars. So to answer your question once and for all, I'm Steve. I'm Leo. Case closed. Another big complaint was that we ran out of time before we could actually show you a Chevy. Guilty as charged. So here's one now. That's a full-size Chevy truck, and look at that deal. Deals like that on all Chevy trucks right now. I'll let you another one. Well, now we are out of time. Don't commercials seem a lot longer at home? Beats me. I actually just go out and make a sandwich. Oh, Major lunch. A look at K-State head coach Bill Snyder. He has yet to win a game on the road. He will be 0-10 as the Kansas State mentor. He doesn't get the first down. They needed one yard, but Kansas State does not get it. Let's go down to Mark McIntosh. 
All right, we got an update on this possible play involving Canavis McGee and Alfred Williams, and they're coming into the ball game right now. Look for them both to line up at tight end. They're going to run curl patterns about 10 yards downfield. I uh, found out they practice this during the week, so this isn't completely new. Back up to you guys. Well, it's completely new in live action, that's for sure. Hey, Mac, when you talk to them in the <laughs> locker room, make sure you get on them for not taking care. I mean, they don't look like tight ends or receivers. They look like linebackers. Not a three-point stance, not bad. McGee on the left side of the line, Williams on the right side. And Charles Johnson might throw to him. He does. <laughs> he tries to hit Canavis McGee, who tries to go over the linebacker to get it. A nice effort. I tell you what, they're going to go off. One play is all they can stand, and the fans <laughs> appreciate the effort. Hey, they hit guys all the time, and they never get a chance to catch the ball, or run for a touchdown, play the glamour side of the ball, so why not? What are you saying? They they hit guys all the time, so they should have a chance to get hit? Sure. They, no, they play the glamour <laughs> side of the ball. How many touchdowns do they get to score, huh? Let them play. One uh, play's enough, though. They've garnered enough glamour to last a lifetime. Great season to see you at linebacker. Charles Johnson fumbles the ball, falls on it himself at the 39-yard line, calling the loss of three. The only good news about that play, the clock continues to run. 13.05 to go in this ballgame. Awaiting the buffs in the locker room, Steve Hatchell and Arthur Hertz from the Orange Bowl. Bowl bids cannot go out until November 24th, but that's when you're looking for at-large teams. When you win the Big Eight, you automatically go to the Orange Bowl. Third and 13. Johnson looking for David Brown incomplete and the buffs in a punting situation a little wrestling going down at the 35 yard line broken up number 79 Russ Heasley for the buffs an offensive lineman put the pin on one of the K State players I bet you won't see many tight ends or wide receivers asking to play linebacker on defense what do you think? I think you're right. No, sir. Michael Smith back to receive the punt from Tom Rowan. Rowan shanks it to the right. Smith tries it up the middle. Gets up to the 28-yard line, brought down by Scott DeGoler. A 40-yard punt and an 8-yard return by Smith. Let's go down to the field right now. Another report from Mark McIntosh. Thanks, guys. The report on Greg Lose is as bad as you guys had predicted. He tore both ligaments in that knee. Dave Burton says he'll have major surgery very soon. Oh. Back upstairs. That's, that's bad. What a shame. What a shame. First and 10 from the K-State 27-yard line. Smart Gesso is still the quarterback. Up across the 30-yard line is Richard Boyd. Richard Boyd, the starting fullback for K-State normally, hasn't gotten a lot of action today. Gained three yards on that play. It'll be second and seven. Under 12 minutes to go in this final regular season game. Channel 4 won't get to call the Orange Bowl game for you, but it will be on NBC and Channel 4. New Year's Day. Jeff Bruner made the tackle on that play for the Buffs. Bruner's pretty active for a nose guard. He's played some behind Joel Steed this year. He's a little bit small for the position, but very, very quick. You can see him on Smart Gesso before he can get set. Freshman, red, freshman red shirt from Sterling, Colorado. Reminds you a little bit of Kyle Rappel because of that quickness and overall stature. The coaching staff hopes he isn't quite as uh, vocal as Kyle Rappel was when he was here. Third and 15, the draw to Jackson. And he is waylaid by Eric Hamilton. 
K-State has a fourth down and long situation. They bring in the punter, Cobb. Rico Smith will return the punt for the Buffs. Look at 16, Vance Joseph. Might get a little work before the afternoon is over for the Buffs at quarterback. This kid Bill McCartney likes a lot. Young man from New Orleans. That'll be a penalty flag. K-State moved on the offensive line there. Smith fields it at the 38. Gets it to midfield, racked up at the 49. And you see the preliminary call there. It will go against the Wildcats. A 39-yard punt and an 11-yard return by Rico Smith. Bill McCartney wants to decline that penalty because the Buffs have good field position. And speaking, against the kicking team. speaking of Bill McCartney, he will be in our studio tomorrow night for the Bill McCartney Show. Sunday's at 10.35 following the News 4 Late Edition and the man sitting right next to me, Dave Logan, will host what should be a very happy show. So what are you going to do? Are you going to talk to him about playing Notre Dame tomorrow night? Whatever he wants to talk about. <laughs> You're the host, Dave. You don't see my name on it, do you? <laughs> Let me ask you this. When, when Dan Reeves showed, what do you, what do you ask Dan? <laughs> this year, <laughs> yeah, no coming. Vince Joseph in for the Buffs at quarterback. Keeps the ball on the option. A nice little jaunt down to the 36-yard line. Says thank you to Charles Johnson, the wide receiver, for trying to get a block. Vance Joseph is very, very quick. And he's a guy that you'll see playing quarterback in the next few years. Of course, Charles Johnson's back as well, but Vance has very good option skills. Here he tries to set up the block by Charles Johnson on the right side and then runs almost right over it. 16-yard gain for Joseph. Buffs down to the K-State 35-yard line with a first down. Under 10 minutes to go in the game. Vance Joseph with a drill of a pass to tight end John Bowman. It's a minor miracle Bowman held on to that one. I'll tell you, that's one that kills your average per reception. <laughs> Let's go down to the field and Mark McIntosh. Mark? Thanks, guys. A lot of former buffs on the sidelines today. One of them right here with me right now, fullback Eric Kissick. What's been going on these days? Well, right now, I tell you, I'm married. I have a beautiful little daughter, Emily, and uh, I work at Xerox down in Denver. Have you had a chance to see the buffs play much this year? Oh, yeah. Every week. I watch them every week. Proud of them. You going to Miami? I, I hopefully, hopefully, maybe. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I'll be watching on TV though. What's your prediction this year? Last year, you guys, you know, I know you guys felt you should have beaten Notre Dame. You did not. How do you think they're going to do this year? They're going to. They'll win the game. I can't make any predictions. It's going to be tough. It's going to be real tough. Notre Dame's a tough team, but uh, I think this is their year. This is their year. Why they'll can't win. you make any predictions? I can't make any score predictions. They'll win the game. They're going to win the game. What do you think was the turnaround for this team this year? You know, they were 1-1-1, one, one and one, then they got their act together. What do you think was the turnaround? I think that basically they just woke up and realized where they were at. You know, at first they started off a little, you know, shaky. They didn't realize the opportunity they had. And, they, and Mac did a good job of coming together in the seniors roles. And uh, so they're where they're at now. We're going to Miami. All right, Eric Kissick, thanks a lot. Thank you. All right, guys, back up to you. Sorry we kind of talked through two plays there, but I know you guys will pick everybody up. It's all right, Mark. In a 43-3 game, it doesn't matter a whole lot. Mark McIntosh <laughs> pressing, pressing Eric Kissick for some sort of prediction. Vance Joseph ran the last two plays for the Buffs. Got enough yardage for another first down. Boy, he was tough on Kissick, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> oh, First and ten from the K-State 25-yard line. James Hill and Chuck Snowden, the running backs for the Buffs. This is Snowden. A nice run, but a flag on the field. I'll tell you, Evan Simpson, as we get a holding call against Colorado, the nose guard for Kansas State, if we could get a shot of him, if you ever wondered, if you hadn't watched football and you wonder what 
the prototype nose guard looks like. Holding on the offense, 10 yards from the previous spot, replete the down. Evan Simpson, number 76 in the white, could be nothing other than a nose guard. <laughs> Can we get, I mean, is that a nose guard or is that a nose guard? <laughs> and fellas, he hadn't been blocked too many times this afternoon. I mean, he, he sits in there and he even looks good on pictures. Got the shades on. Right, so no, the shades so nobody will recognize him. I'll tell you what, <laughs> that, I mean, you've got to love a guy that big. Into the ball game for the Buffs. At tailback, a senior, Roger Yago from Littleton, Colorado. Number 41. He's the man left side of your screen. Yago gets the call, but not much protection. That'll be a loss of three yards. Yago comes out of the game now. Well, I'll tell you what's nice to see, Dave. Every time one of these buffs comes off the field, Darian Hagan, who is out of pad, comes, comes out onto the field and slaps him a high five. Roger Yago, he never had a chance on this one. Kansas State blitzing up the middle. They hog time and get him down, but he got a standing O coming off the field. Nice to see the senior. And the fans with a chant, here we go, Yao go, here we go. He's not in the ball game now, though. Second and 24. Vance Joseph goes deep. Mark Henry, touchdown! Vance Joseph's first touchdown pass of the year. Mark Henry's first touchdown reception. What good job by both players. Vance Joseph eludes a tackler, buys himself some time. This is the same pattern that Pritchard caught earlier from Darian Hagan. Joseph throws it right as he gets hit. And Mark Henry behind the free safety and behind the cornerback as well. Pretty good play for guys that don't get many opportunities to play. Well, if you're on the Kansas State sideline, you have to wonder what's going on here. The Buffs throwing deep with a 40-point lead. But, you know, it's hard to put these kids in the ballgame that don't play a whole lot and say, okay, don't do much. They want to do well. And they are doing well. Blue toe for the extra point. This will be point number 50. And he's got it. The Buffs take a 50 to 3 lead with 6.54 to go in the game. To introduce Isuzu's new rodeo, we placed it and Toyota's 4Runner in this campground to see which is better for family fun. Sure, the rodeo has more horsepower and rear anti-locking brakes, but another key difference is that only the rodeo seats six. So, combined with its price, thousands less than Forerunner, we see that only in a rodeo, no one gets stung. The new Isuzu Rodeo. At just $12,499, there's no comparison. Before you men go on this mission, I'm taking you to the best French restaurant in the city. Somewhere a small restaurant is missing a big sale. It was busy! But U.S. West Communications can keep your small business from missing those big sales. How about pizza? Yeah! Find out how to protect those orders from going to the competition. Call U.S. West, making the most of your time. What would you say if Pizza Hut served up fully loaded Supreme Pizzas for the never-before-low price of just $6.99 each? Oh, baby, that's what I like! It's the holiday feast deal. Get up to five Supreme Pizzas each for just $6.99. Oh, baby, that's what I like! The Supreme Pizza with six of your favorite toppings at a price you're really gonna like. So this holiday season, hurry into Pizza Hut for the deal that's got everyone saying... Oh, baby, that's what I like! Good look. The man with the black under his eyes is Mark Henry, number 25, the junior out of Fleming, Colorado. Just hauled in a 39-yard touchdown pass from Vance Joseph. And the Bucks go up 50 to 3. Luto kicking off. Andre Coleman will kneel down. All this buff scoring in Kansas State has had one chance or has taken the opportunity only once all day to run the ball out of the end zone on the kickoff. A real credit to the big feet of Pat Bluto and Jim Harper, the men doing the kicking off for the Buffs today. 
Well, they just announced over the public address system there's another senior participating in his last home game here. Chip, the mascot. The young man that dresses up in that Buffalo outfit. First and 10 for K-State from its own 20-yard line. A new quarterback in the game for K-State. That's Matt Garber, a sophomore out of out of Kansas, and a flag on the field on the incomplete throw. I was going to try and pronounce the name of his hometown, but I didn't have a clue. S A B E T H A. Illegal motion. That's on the all right. Fan. Decline. Second down. He threw, he threw it to Kansas. That's it. He threw it to number 82, and I don't have a clue who he is. Not on the roster. All right. Well, not on the roster. Almost got hit in the head with the football because he didn't, <laughs> didn't turn around quick enough. Fortunately, Mr. Roster came out of the wall. No, he's back in at flank. <laughs> and a quick pass to him, but he wasn't looking. He's got to turn around. Let's get his name. Get those binoculars right. out. That's Garner. That's Mr. Garner. Nope, that's Vassour. Mr. Vassour, the last couple of times, didn't get his head turned around. He's, no, he's nowhere to be found. We're checking the rosters. Well, you've heard of the no-name defense? <laughs> oh. This is the no-name offense. Third and ten for K-State. Garber sets up the screen once again. Whoever the intended receiver was wasn't looking. The ball falls in between three purple and white jerseys. Yeah, that was going to be a screen to Richard Boyd, and Colorado did a good job of sniffing out the play. He said give credit to the kickoff team of Colorado. Let's get also give credit to those who have stayed with us the entire afternoon watching this game at home. And those who will stay with us, the final six minutes and 42 seconds, I would like to tell you, that when this game is over, we will attempt to go into the CU locker room for that presentation of the Orange Bowl invitation. Can't make any promises, but we'll try to do it. Cobb is punting for K-State. Dave McLuhan is returning. Fumbles the ball, gets the good bounce, and gets a nice run back. Down to the 44-yard line of K-State. Well, it's been a roller coaster ride up and down the rankings for CU, but what matters is where you end up, and right now they're number two. Well, look at September 17th and the 24th. They are ranked number 20 in the country. That, of course, coming after the loss to Illinois, the tie to Stan, I mean, the, uh, the tie with Tennessee early, the loss to Illinois, and then they started to make their move. Actually, they won October 1st and dropped a couple of notches, and then things just kind of fell in place for the remainder of the year. 10, 9, 4, and 2 the last four weeks. They dropped a couple notches that weekend because that was the controversial win, the fifth down game against Missouri. Flags on the field. You got Canavis and Alford playing tight ends, and you, you can't let them play tight end if they're going to jump off sides now. <laughs> I'll tell you, those two. Hey, every, de you know, every defensive guy will hear the call. Dead ball, encroachment. On the offense, repeat first down. I bet 90% of it, all the defensive players at every level, if you ask them, they'd say, I wish I could play offense. Now, some of them athletically can, but I bet most of them would say, yeah, give me a chance to play either tight end or fullback or something where the ball's thrown to me. I can't get to the football. So McGee and Williams will have another opportunity. They're still in the ball game, lined up as tight ends on opposite sides. Vance Joseph, the quarterback, he lifts one to Alfred Williams, who makes a great catch. <laughs> Keep the ball, Alfred. A great catch by Alfred Williams. Goes over the defender. Down to the 31-yard line. <laughs> i tell you what, Joe Harrington ought to get Alfred to come out and play basketball, but he's going to be a first-round draft choice and won't be able to. Williams on the left side just runs a nice little flag pattern. Watch this catch, folks. You think this guy could play a little tight end? <laughs> Oh, do tight ends in the NFL make more than outside linebackers? Absolutely not. A first down picked up by Alfred Williams. Vance Joseph tries to run it. Gain of one. 
Boy, you're never going to hear the end of that one, I can tell you. Alfred Williams, his first career catch. <laughs> one catch for 16 yards. Not a bad average. So Alfred can say next year, hey, I averaged 16 yards a catch in my career. He can also say <laughs> he played both ends of the field. Oh. He was he was a two-way man in college. That's right. A lot of you might not be aware of it. He and Canavis McGee are very good friends. They're both from Houston. They call themselves the H Boys. This is Arterberry. Looking for a hole. Finds one. It's about five yards. Short of the first down, however. We'll give you some final scores. Illinois beat Indiana today, 24 to 10. Clemson, 24. South Carolina, 15. Michigan, 35. Minnesota, 18. Maryland beat Virginia, 35 to 30. Georgia Tech, 42. Wake Forest, 7. Syracuse, 31. West Virginia, 7. North Carolina, 24. Duke, 22. Florida leading Kentucky in the fourth quarter, 47 to 15. BYU, 38-16 over Utah in the fourth. Michigan State, 22 to 15 over Northwestern in the fourth. And Alabama is leading Cincinnati 45 to 7 in the fourth. Notre Dame 21, Penn State 7. That's in the second quarter. There's a timeout on the field. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. This is it. There's only one light beer with big draft taste. Cold filter, genuine draft light. Yeah, we're gonna need some help up here, over. When your car was new, it was born to run. Galloping around on regular unleaded gasoline was just fine. But with time, your car can have its ups and downs, begin to lumber along, and it's a fact. Around 15,000 miles, your car can start to lose acceleration because regular unleaded may not be enough. Now's the time to turn to silver. Higher octane Enco Silver can bring back the power. And remember, when you drive, make every gallon count. players couldn't wait until the end of the game. They've already dumped water all over Bill McCartney in celebration of another Big 8 title, another trip to the Orange Bowl. Third and five for the Buffs. The reverse goes for the touchdown. A 26-yard touchdown run by freshman wide receiver Charles Johnson. The play that normally goes to Mike Pritchard this time goes to another CJ. I tell you, watching Bill Snyder's reaction, I don't think he appreciates this. The pitch, they've blitzed the entire time, and Charles Johnson does a nice job of duck, ducking up inside the block of David Brown into the end zone, but Bill Snyder stood and had a long look to the other sideline with his hands on his hips as if to say, I mean, how much is enough? Lutel the extra point. 57 points on the board for the Buffs. They lead it 57 to three. And the K-State sideline is somewhat stunned. Somewhat. Kansas State's been blitzing much of the game and they almost blow this thing up. Vance Joseph was being drugged down much the way Hagen was in the first half when he pitched to Mike Pritchard but he gets the ball away and Charles Johnson again with very good speed good block there and Charles Johnson off to the races C E Johnson he is not the quarterback obviously he is Charles Johnson the wide receiver This is by far the highest point total for the Buffs this year. Last year, 
just through the head game where they scored 59 points and it happened to be against the same Kansas State team. They beat the Wildcats last year in Manhattan 59 to 11. Now this crowd is loving every minute of it. We can get a shot. The band is playing. People are up dancing. The record for points in a game for the Buffs is 65. They scored that against the University of Arizona back in 1958. So it is within reach. They're just eight points away. Luto kicking off. Once again. Far beyond the end zone. And Kansas State without a chance to run it back. Four thirty five to go. And then CU can start thinking about Notre Dame and the Orange Bowl. Dave, how do you think that Notre Dame team this year compares to the team that beat CU in the Orange Bowl last year? Well, I think Notre Dame's a better passing team this year with Rick Meyer. Can throw the ball. They're more versatile. They've given up a lot more yardage this year than last year defensively. And I think that would be the key to the game, what the CU offense does. Do they dominate and control the line of scrimmage? Garber intercepted by Paul Rose. Rose down to the 10, waiting for the blocking, pushed out of bounds at about the seven-yard line. Paul Rose, the senior from Columbine High School, his second interception on the year. Well, not a bad way to end his career. David Gibbs, a senior, he's got an interception. And now Paul Rose gets into the act. The ball was thrown right to him, and Rose has played a little fullback in his career, too, and uh, had thoughts about trying to get across the goal line on that one. This is an easy pick. Ball's thrown right to Paul Rose. He's got good depth on the drop, and you can see had he not caught it, Ronnie Bradford might have had it. So the Buffs have a first down at the Kansas State 8-yard line. Once again, remember, 65 points is the record for CU. A new quarterback in for the Buffs. That's Mike Freeman, a sophomore out of Littleton. O.C. Oliver up the middle. Touchdown. And I tell you, you would have thought they just won the game by one point. There must be 20 CU players on the field to celebrate O.C. Oliver's touchdown. They know he's had a tough time, a tough career here because of injuries. Everybody thrilled that O.C. got his final opportunity. Popular and a very likable young man. And this one, he's untouched all the way to the goal line. Excellent job blocking, a good job by the fullback, James Hill. And O.C. Oliver caps a fine career here. Look at those guys mobbing him. Look at that scene on the sideline. And once again, the chant from the crowd, O. Oh. C. Oliver. They've got him up on their shoulders in the sideline. Well, if they went for the two points, they would have tied their record for points in a game. Instead, Bluto kicks the extra point, and they're up 64 to 3. Well, I'm not glad to see the score run up, but I'm glad to see O.C. Oliver have a chance to, to wind it up the way he started it. O.C. Oliver was an outstanding running back. For people who uh, didn't follow CU that many years ago, good block by James Hill and O.C. Oliver, as he did in his freshman year, scampers through a, a big hole and gets into the end zone. Well, that McCartney show tomorrow night you're going to be hosting, uh, you could fill the whole half hour with offensive highlights. Paul Rose set up the touchdown with an interception. Those poor guys doing push-ups. The cheerleaders at it again. They've got about 300 push-ups today. There was only one person on this field feeling more <laughs> weary than them, and that's the head coach of Kansas State, Bill Snyder. You ever notice after you get tired push-ups, they don't go down very far. The arm's been just a little bit. Then the head starts to go down. Actually, you touch enough. The crowd now booing them. They're doing sit-ups now. <laughs> Too tired to do push-ups. I'll do sit-ups. <laughs> The girl's going to do it, yes. There's some time. Mouth-to-mouth <laughs> <laughs> -mouth resuscitation. Get him up. The cheerleader. <laughs> That's a great shot. Oh. 
These guys won't have to work out for a week now. I'm just told by our spotter, Doug Strauss, we're going to revise that record for points in a game. In 1905, the Buffs beat Regis College. Take a guess at the score, Dave. Uh, I'll tell you, it was a shutout. 93 to nothing. 109 Not bad. to nothing. I missed a couple of touchdowns with two-point conversions. I got there late. The game had already started. Ray Friedman, our statistician, just told us that after hearing that, Nebraska is going to schedule Regis College for next year. <laughs> that comment by Les Shapiro, you can send your letters and calls to cha <laughs> Channel 4. <laughs> I'll give you the phone number a little later, folks. 422 to go in this game. The Buffs lead it 64 to 3. Into the ball game for Kansas and running that ball is Kip Rawlings. Freshman out of Utah. It's amazing. Most of the crowd has stayed around. I would say the majority of the seats are still filled. They just want to uh, take this thing down to the end. Nice tackle by Ronnie Wolfork, the outside linebacker. But this is the last opportunity to see a lot of these great players. And uh, not many folks have decided to leave early. See that newspaper article in Denver Post this week about how many buffs might be drafted. We could see 10 of these seniors go in the NFL draft and maybe 12 altogether on an NFL roster next year. They're that talented and that deep. Rawlings again with the carry. Doesn't get very far. Third and 11 for the Wildcats. I would assume Kansas State will remember this one next year when the Buffs come into Manhattan, Kansas. Darian Hagan may be calling plays here in the fourth quarter. Third and 11 from their own 19, Kansas State. Smart Jesso, the quarterback. Rawlings to the 21. Hit by a host of black and gold jerseys. I tell you, blood bursting fans here in Boulder, they want more. Smile and cheer about. Yeah, <laughs> we'll probably see him down in Miami. Someone come pick him up, please. <laughs> oh. Fans starting the wave now. Kansas State will punt. Rico Smith will receive it. At about the 42, calls for a fair catch. No reason to get hurt returning the punt. Not now with 209. There's a young Buck fan. Well, not quite number one. Not yet, young lady. Still number two and looking to knock off the number one team, Notre Dame, in the Orange Bowl New Year's Day. There were only 10 players on the CU punt unit that time. Didn't matter. Rico Smith chose to fair catch the ball. Freeman, the quarterback for CU. Up the middle, maybe a yard. Well, and with today's sellout, the Buffs set an all-time attendance record. They've gone over the 310,000 mark for attendance on the year. Well, we've had a great year here doing the Buffs on Channel 4. Absolutely. They've given us a good product. Hopefully we've given you, the viewers, a good product. Number of people to thank. We'll get to those names near the end of the broadcast. I'd personally like to thank the CU Sports Information Department for all the help they've given us this year. Dave Platty, the SID, his assistants. Tom Peterson and Doug Strauss. Doug happens to be our, Stra our uh, spotter today. And there are some of the names from Channel 4 who have given you the 
pictures and the sound throughout the 1990 college football season. Yep, and we sure uh, appreciate everybody that uh, has worked in the truck, done a great job the entire year. Done a great job, guys. A lot of us will be going down to the Orange Bowl to cover the buffs down there for the week preceding the ball game. So keep that dial on, Channel 4. We'll tell you what's happening with the buffs all along the way down in Miami. This is Hill, has some room. He can turn the corner. He fumbles, fumbles the ball. And it is recovered by Kansas State. So a nice run by James Hill. Negated by the fumble. John Butler recovers it for Kansas State. I think that's Colorado's first turnover of the game. Now Charles Johnson threw an interception. Charles Johnson threw an interception. That's their second turnover of the game. <laughs> James Hill, you're going to see a lot of him next year out of Whitefield High School. He's had it slapped out of his hands. Hey, he's a bruiser. Hill can block it. Hill can run it. He'll get a lot of work next year. Especially with George Hemingway leaving. Hemingway a senior. Well, if we can get a shot of this, the fans are descending from the top of the stadium down to the first row of seats. Batten the hatches. I would imagine they intend to jump out onto this field and help the Buffs celebrate another Big 8 title and a trip to the Orange Bowl. That should be the last play of the afternoon. We're under 20 seconds. Under 10 seconds. The Buffs starting to filter out onto the field. The officials asking for the ball. And Bill McCartney will call it a day. The CU Buffs. Back-to-back -back Big 8 titles. Back-to-back -back trips to the Orange Bowl. The security folks trying to do their job and keep the fans off the field and away from the goalposts. They're, they're like Custer. You see Bill Snyder and Bill McCartney talking after the game. Fans everywhere on Folsom Field. Security doing a great job keeping them away from the goalposts. I, I wouldn't bet on that happening much longer, though. They're everywhere. <laughs> First time ever in Big A Conference history that a team other than Oklahoma and Nebraska has won back-to-back -back titles. And CU has been perfect in the Big Eight the last two years. Back-to-back, 10-win -back, seasons for the Buffs for the first time ever. Bill McCartney trying to enjoy it while talking to the media. got to feel awfully proud being an alum absolutely we've said it many times before this program has come a long long way since 1984 that year Bill McCartney was in danger of losing his job Bill Merrill decided to give him a new contract and he has turned things around and it's helped to recruit guys like Canavis McGee as you see Alfred Williams but now the blue chip athletes the cream of the crop they look at Colorado as a place that they can go to play on a good football team playing a big time ball and also have a chance to play for the national championship after a while it gets to the point with a good program where you don't have to recruit the player as much as they recruit you look at the inside of the Buffs locker room facility We will try and get you the official announcement from the Orange Bowl committee What's up, people baby? See you as they in invite Miami. the bus to the Orange Bowl. Joe Garten slapping five. It's a nice scene. You knew it was coming the last couple weeks, but now you're living the reality of it. And also the reality of <laughs> not enough security people to keep those goalposts up. The security guys in the light blue shirts fighting a losing battle are still trying to hold on to the goalposts, but it's coming down, folks. They might be taking it down themselves, so the fans don't do it. That's exactly what they're doing. 
they unscrewed the base of the goal post so the fans don't rip them down. Those things are expensive. I believe when we uh, when we saw the folks up in Fort Collins rip down the goal posts uh, at Hughes Field, I think I saw a figure of $5,000. Five or seven. If it seems more businesslike in the locker room, this team really has endured a lot of hard times this year. They've come from behind in so many victories and got a hard bark to them. All right, we're going to take a break. We will come back and try and get that Orange Bowl announcement at Folsom Field. We could spend 30 seconds talking about the 1991 Pontiac Sunbird, priced at just $81.84. But we'll let the Sunbird speak for itself. Solo. Pontiac Express. Solo. 1991 Pontiac Sunbird at 81 84 Plus, if you qualify as a first-time buyer, get an additional $600 cash back. For the ride of your life, see your Colorado Pontiac dealer. Back when I was a boy, Mom made a country fried steak that was so good we couldn't wait to sit down to supper. I always thought we should have one just like it at Wendy's. Introducing Wendy's 99 cent country fried steak. 100% beef, lightly breaded and cooked golden brown. It's new on the 99 cent super value menu. You can take the boy out of the country, but he still has to eat. Try the new 99 cent country fried steak only on Wendy's super value menu. its 30th annual production of The Nutcracker, November 30th through December 24th. For tickets, call 290-TIXS. Presented by the Colorado Ballet and Channel 4. Katie, this is my grandfather, and this is your great-grandfather. Now, that is kind of confusing, isn't it? What about your great-grandfather? Was he a hero, or was he a zero? I'm going back into my family history in Bob's Colorado. You'll meet my great-great-great-great-grandfather, the first Episcopal priest in Colorado. My ancestors shared some of the triumphs and the tragedies of our rich Colorado history. I'm Bob Palmer. Join me for Bob's Colorado at 5 and 10 Sunday. Here's a shot live from the CU locker room. That, my friends, is the Big 8 trophy held up by Joe Garten. On your left, and George Hemingway, the Buffs find fullback on your right. The Big A Trophy for the second year in a row. It'll stay right here in Boulder. the CU fight song and the costly one it was. They're going to have to do a little repair work on the ceiling there. There's the other goalpost that the security folks didn't get down in time. So the fans took care of it. Then also a live shot from the Folsom Field floor. See you locker room. You see the back of head coach Bill McCartney and his quarterback there, Darian Hagan. Tom Peterson, the assistant SID on the right. Bill Marot, the athletic director, with the microphone there with an announcement. And the executive director of the Orange Bowl, an old caller about himself, Steve Hatchell. I'd like to, first I'd like to have you here from President Vaughn. We'll introduce uh, President Hurst. Go, go, go! You did it, you did it! I'm go, bound, number one! Great fellows, thanks a lot. This is the chairman, president of the uh, Orange Bowl, Arthur Hurts. He's with us to tell us where we're going January the 1st. <laughs> Back, 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 back
It looks like some familiar friendly faces I saw last year. Well, last year was practice. This year is the real game. As uh, president of the Orange Bowl, I'm empowered to offer the bid today to the 57th annual Orange Bowl game that we played January 1st, 1991. Uh, we ask you to be our home team. cheering and let's go into that locker room and our mark mcintosh mark you there yeah we are here with alfred williams the outstanding all-american linebacker first i gotta ask you i know this feels good you're going back to miami yeah this feels very good you know this back to back this country hasn't been uh one that's been here for many years and tradition is starting and uh hopefully it'll go on forever and keep the state of colorado proud you guys were one one and one when you went down to austin texas that was the turning point wasn't it it, it, it sure was you know that one one and one record was uh you know it was it was an understatement for the way we were playing and i'm glad a lot of guys stayed focused and came through like they did i got a dog i got a dog about this man how about that pass reception today oh you know me you know I'm the Michael Jordan of college football, so I had to go up and get it. <laughs> All right, you've heard it right there from Alfred Williams, the All-American linebacker for the CU Buffs. Darian Hagan has joined us right here, right now. Darian, I know you got to be, you got to be happy. You guys are going to the Orange Bowl again. Oh yeah, I'm real happy. We uh, we played a tough schedule. And we've been fighting all year to get back where we at now, and, and it's just uh, a warden to get back there. All right, buddy, good luck to you. New Year's night in Miami. All right, thanks a lot. Darian Hagan, the Buffs quarterback, back upstairs to Les. Thanks, Mark. They sure did play a tough schedule. Six of the 12 teams on that schedule were ranked in the top 20. So the final score here from Folsom Field, 64 to 3, the Buffs over Kansas State. The executive producer of today's game is Tom Edwards, produced by Terry Trevato. Directed by Tom Richards. The chief engineer is John Bates. For my partner Dave Logan and Mark McIntosh, this is Les Shapiro saying good afternoon from Folsom Field. This has been a presentation of Channel 4 Sports, the home of the CU Buffalo.